Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the second part of Movies Are Real's Best of 2K21. <laughs> I got it, folks. Hello there, everybody. I'm George Cruz. Uh, I am here with Ryan Lance. Welcome, Morbius Nation. <laughs> uh, Carrie Lyles. Uh, 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 Mor Morbius, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is not the Morbius spoiler cast. What? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Why am I here? Not yet. <laughs> uh, not yet, at least, uh, folks. This is the second part of our best of 2021 discussions. Uh, well, we will not be discussing Morbius. You told me specifically this was a three-hour spoiler cast. <laughs> a new Marvel. Where we delved into the new <laughs> Marvel legend. A new Marvel <laughs> legend rises. Not today, though. <laughs> or whatever the fuck that Stay poster tuned. says. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, hello there, everyone. Uh, we're here to do the rest of our best of 2021 uh well, we're kind of we're kind of late i don't know we'll see i'll probably get this out pretty soon but uh we gotta close the book on 2021 baby oscars happen and nothing eventful happened that night nothing happened very normal no. oscars yeah. very normal oscars <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing about the oscars was that they decided that you know what this time the theme is going to be Movies. <laughs> because every fucking time they were like, Do you remember like, this? Whoa, it only took us 96 Oscars. Vin Diesel this. presents the movies, <laughs> the Oscars. Finally, <laughs> what I've been looking for. Anyways, uh, enough about that. Uh, enough about an inferior awards show. We're here to get to the business, baby. Um, today, uh, we are going to go over uh, the rest of our categories, which include most disappointing. Standout moment, best performance. The don't go in there. It's a do. It's a do not. Do not. But go you in didn't. There. I, I made it. Do not. The do not go in there award. We did this every Start fucking over. time. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about some of the the best old stuff that we discovered in 2021, and then we will stack rank the top 10 movies of 2021 from 10 to 1. Live, like one of those tier list videos that are very Ooh. popular now. Are you, are everyone doing that? Yeah, I was watching. Uh, People do that still. I, I think. was watching. Uh, uh, like a is this animal op? As oh. Donald was watching that. Mm, those are fun. Now, if we wanted to be really cool, we have to do like a Smasher Pass, but with movies because like Christ. those are popular again. No. Oh man. <laughs> I'm putting my foot down. Gary, uh, <laughs> Space Jam, a new legacy, smash or pass? Kill myself. Oh, whoa, I did not know that was an option. Yeah. I don't think there's any movie that came out this year that I feel any sexual uh, affection towards. Not even, uh... Careful. Antlers? Yeah, all right. Sure. All right, okay, all right. I definitely do not feel any sexual attraction to these movies that are a part of the most disappointing category. That's our first category, folks. Uh, yeah, most disappointing. I don't think I have to exp Oh, I guess, let okay. Let me do the housekeeping. We are looking for uh, three movies, two runner-up and one winner of the category, uh, other than top 10, where we will be choosing 10 movies and then ranking them in an ordered list of 10 to 1, with one being the movie of the year. We have, we cannot watch everything uh, as, as try as we might, uh, we don't. We we like we did not watch Coda. I did not watch Coda. At least, sorry. I actually did watch Coda. Coda okay. It's fine. later. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, Ryan did not see the Power of the Dog, or did you see it? Though? I did see the Power of the Dog. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> uh, that's there. So sorry. I don't. Think, I'd be shocked if this. Wait, uh, we have seen everything now. <laughs> Ryan watched Power of the Dog, so uh, we're good. I'd be shocked if this is the year that anybody got offended about your pick for best movie. I just don't think it was a strong year. Anyways. That's the housekeeping. That's Most right. disappointing, pretty self-explanatory. The 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 key in this category is expectation. So like, what were you? It, it's kind of like the worst. It's, it's it's adjacent to the worst movie, but this is all about expectation. Did you think this was gonna be great? Uh, and then you were let down. Did you go into maybe even mid expectations, and then it just was horrible? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, most disappointing. Uh, the nominees are. Mortal Kombat, Halloween Kills, Space Jam, A New Legacy, <laughs> Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrace Upon a Time, Spiral from the Book of Saw, Candyman, F9, The Fast Saga, not The Fastest Saga, The Forever Purge, wow, that was that, wow, that was that year. The Forever Purge! <laughs> The Purge forever. Uh, <laughs> don't look up. Last night in Soho, Antlers, 
and spiral from the book of Saw again. <laughs> I, t- I deleted it on my end. It didn't update on yours. Yeah, oh, okay, was great. Proofreading. Yeah, it didn't update on mine. We were so disappointed spiral from the book of Saw. Anyways, um, I'll take off fa- F9 the fastest saga because I've come to terms. It's not a terrible movie. It's fine. But I think uh, the golden years of this movie franchise are... Uh, are in the past, and uh, I don't think it can disappoint me anymore. Really, <laughs> I think it would be like, oh, that was way bad compared to eight. Was the most disappointing one, and after that, I saw this, and I was like, you know what? That's probably as good as gonna get from now on. So that's fine. Uh, so we can delete that. All right. It is the most stupid Fast and Furious movie, probably. I don't uh, know what your guys' expectations were going into Space Jam: A New Legacy. <laughs> like, it's I didn't past- expect that. <laughs> I also didn't expect that. Like when we saw the trailers, I was like, yeah, "Oh, this is kind a, of writing in the wall." This is a direction I didn't think <clears throat> they'd take, but it was a lot worse than I was expecting. But it's also like my thing's a, not updating in time, by the way, folks. So oh man, but it's also just like a sequel to something that's. It was already like dating itself by like, oh, the Looney Tunes are playing basketball in the 90s. It's like they were already like a little outdated then. And yes. now they're so outdated that Warner Brothers is afraid no one will watch a Space Jam movie. So they have, so to, they inject have to add a bunch things, of yeah. nonsense into it. <sighs> Terrible movie. That one worst, right? Yes, it did. Yeah, I hit <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty. Dis- it's disappointing in that it reminded me of how much I like Space Jam One, and then that they fucked it up that bad. And it's just a, like Space Jam One was a cynical marketing exercise. Space Jam Two is a cynical marketing exercise. That it, there's like no heart at all. Yeah. Like at least there's Space Jam. There's something there. And this one is like nothing. It's all cynicism. It's rotten all the way down. <laughs> yeah. LG rhythm, baby. <laughs> Um. Yeah, we can take it off though. It's okay. not the most disappointing. I will take off the list for you. Okay, it's updating now. Great, fantastic. Um, did we really have a lot of expectations for the Forever Purge? Or we were disappointed that he said the Purge forever. <laughs> that that I is deeply that is very disappointing because that's the theme that we quoted the most whenever we saw that trailer. <laughs> And then it wasn't in the movie. This keeps happening to Sometimes us. Sometimes it happens. This happened at Morbius. This happened at Morbius. Yes. I'm, at, I'm, I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Quit it. Is it the Venom joke? Yeah, the, the Venom, Venom joke, joke was there, but that's what that's what we're talking about. But he goes, I'm Venom. Just kidding. I'm Dr. Michael Morbius. Go on ahead in the trailer. But in the movie, he's just like, I'm Venom. Bleh. Just kidding. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> so they cut off the, the, the part. The, the part where he's like, Kidding, I'm Michael Morbius. He's like, just kidding, Michael Morbius at your service. <laughs> Which is like... Which is the part I wanted to see. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to see... I wanted Tell to the Morbius that. Discord that. Okay. Then I'm fucking pissed. All right. I'll, I'll let him know. So yeah, Forever Purge. I'm sorry, Jojo, that's staying for a little bit. Okay. That's fine. All right. We can take off Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. Okay. Upon a time. This was my favorite move of the year. So I yeah, yeah. pretty clear. I was disappointing as somebody who really liked half of the rebuilds. And I was like, where is our definitive ending to this story? And I did not love the it's way It's interesting that you're ended. disappointed when... I feel like the majority of people who were the most disappointed are the ones who waited eight years for the movie to come out. <laughs> I know, out. it's funny. I had like um, a week and I was... Like, yeah, you were just like <laughs> marathon to ball. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I didn't wait that long for it just because I discovered it later. But like, I, I, like, I really liked that ending a lot. I thought it was very good. And, you know, the other endings of the series are also I like valid the, as well. I like the actual ending. I think everything besides the ending I didn't like. Oh, really? Yeah, everything that are... The, the movie that preceded the ending I did not like very much. Or was very confused and I was like, why? Why do this? Why do this? Why? That's, that's the show in general, yeah. to be fair. But we can take it off. Okay, sick. I will do that. And on Gillian, very good. Who would have guessed? Is anyone truly disappointed by Don't Look Up? Uh, Do we have time for that? I thought it looked stupid. Yeah. But I don't know. Are you disappointed think, in society? I'm disappointed in society. <laughs> I'm disappointed in how, like, they had an opportunity to make, like, a film that was saying something about the environment. And they certainly said a lot about the environment, but they didn't, like, what they said is just, like, man, we got wasn't a scientist, am I right? And, like, that's it. Like, that's the only point they made. And, like, that. If your if your goal is to educate people, how about you to like do that as opposed to <laughs> very frustrating, very bad, but bad movie. but 
Yeah, it, I guess not disappointing because I, I felt going into it, I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this. Yeah. Okay. And I did not. Best Picture nominee. I watched it as part of my Best Picture nominee uh, build up to the Oscars, and it Yikes. was the worst one. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um, Antlers is disappointing, but it's not the most disappointing. It's disappointing that they did nothing. They didn't. They didn't go apart from the trailer. They didn't did no explanation of what the what a Wendigo was, or the the history of it, or the cultural like. Uh, the significance of this legend. Uh, and whatever they did do just felt super slapped on yeah. and hand holdy. Yeah. And uh, it's certainly, I like it the most out of everyone here, but even then, I'm like, you could have done more movie. Like, you could have, you, they, they put stuff on the table for these characters where they just um, trauma dump and they don't do anything with that for any of the characters. They just do it because. That's some that's substance, I guess. I yeah, know. and it didn't help that this was a movie that was delayed. Like, yeah, it was that about to also, come out, yeah. and it was delayed. <laughs> and then, like, what eventually proceeded was a very mediocre film. But because, like, the we had like a lot of anticipation for it, or at least added anticipation for it, it just was like, ugh, it's like the Morbius effect. Like, Carrie, imagine if we had seen Morbius in 2020 like we were originally supposed to. Been, been the number one movie of the year. Uh, exactly. People, people <laughs> was it coming in 2020? I did some research. It finished filming in 2019. Mm. <laughs> that's a that's a real fact. Wow. Well, Great stuff. You could have canceled Jerry Little twice in that time. I'm surprised no one has. Um, I'm pretty sure he has. Yeah, he has. But, he, but you know what I'm saying? You could have canceled him again. Uh, Another round. Yeah, but like, More. why is why is he not like, no one's put a stick through the Morbius heart yet, is what I'm saying. I don't know why no he still gives any work. I don't yeah, understand I no either. <laughs> I was telling Carrie, he has to have the greatest agent in Hollywood. I guess. To be getting all this stuff. Um. But yeah, I will. I will. Oh, yeah, antlers. antlers, yeah. Antlers, antlers, antlers. Looking at this list, I can get rid of Candyman. I was mildly I, disappointed. Yeah. It's, it was, you know. I still like it. I like, like it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's a fun movie. I think it could have definitely done more, mm -hmm. but I think it definitely saw all it tried to do. Yeah. yeah. All right. I should rewatch the original Candyman. So we have Mortal Kombat, Halloween Kills a Man, Spiral from the Book of Saw, The Forever Purge, and Last Night in Soho. This is a list. Yeah, we need to cut two. We need to cut two more. I, I don't think I was disappointed in Mortal Kombat. I felt like I knew it was going to suck. I think it sucked in ways I didn't expect it to. But this movie has been in some sort of production for so long and the fact that they missed the mark this bad knowing full, full like what mortal like you know what mortal kombat is it's more popular than ever before people kind of like that first movie i like it a lot but like people were like most people on the street be like you know that's probably the best video game movie ever made probably it's solid it's fun you know you can laugh at it yeah um and they made something that's just so n lifeless. Like, the coolest part of that movie is the beginning. With Sub-Zero and the, the stuff. And uh, and the rest is so forgettable. And there's an Australian... Uh, Kano's Australian, and that's funny. Oh. Remember that? That was fun. <laughs> I didn't like him. I, I am <laughs> I very... About him. <laughs> I am very disappointed. I would cut... Uh, the, the forever uh, we, purge. We can we can we can keep Mortal Kombat. Um, I yeah, will. I would I would also cut Forever Purge because ah, oh, but it's so funny. To keep also, I kind of like the Forever Purge. <laughs> I, was I didn't like it, but like I don't think I was super disappointed by it outside of the one bit. I don't know. I feel like that kind of like cements the. <laughs> we also didn't mention before we deleted Candyman that it did the same fucking thing. Do you remember in the trailer for Candyman? There was that part where he was painting. and He's like ah ah ah. Oh, ah, that's I right. Kept waiting for that. And it wasn't in the final I movie. That at all. And I was like, this fucking sucks. Why do they keep doing this to me? <laughs> so you want me to bring Candyman back, is no. what you're saying? Okay, okay. No, not okay. necessary, but I just was going to mention that. Okay. As a funny and then I would say, I feel like Spire from the Book of Saw was about where I thought it'd oh, be. Oh, man. I disagree. Okay. I you I put, was... that, put that first trailer on right now. For real? Well, you have that no idea what insane. it is with the Kendrick Lamar song with Chris Rock just driving out. And then you're like, oh, what is this? And then 
saw the music kicks in, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? That it is was, hype. It feels like okay. a million years hype. ago, but that was That was insane. so okay. hype. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, yeah. And then the movie is like, well, that's fine. As someone who watched all the Saw movies last year, <laughs> somehow. Okay, but you thought that this would have been like, all right, no, for realsies, let's do something <laughs> yeah. big Well, because it's this. like, let's do something fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and it. it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I then, still, I still kind of like Spiral, but I, I like it. That's fine. It like as a song you, movie, it, like, it's better than it, most. Yeah. <laughs> when you compare it to the level of hype that we felt, but just that from first, that, that first trailer, trailer is so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, but yeah. All right, then I guess I'm cutting the Forever Purge now. I thought we already did that. Okay, Cut I'll do it. it. Okay, cool. Then. I think because you guys are the ones who don't like Last Night in Soho, would you consider it disappointing or <laughs> or the worst? I didn't like both? Baby Driver, but I came. I guess I came in with moderate expectations, but I was like, man, I'm disappointed that this guy just doesn't have the stuff for me. Yeah. I, I, I guess I felt it. disappointed that a director that I really like did yeah. something that I deeply, deeply hate. Oh, okay. <laughs> but... I, I it already we, we, we already said a lot of yeah we yeah. already murdered last <laughs> night in Soho I think but I was disappointed not in the tragic because I hated Babe Driver so I didn't hate it but I didn't like it yeah um, we could cut it oh okay I think well, I think last night in Soho knows how we feel about yeah. it at okay. this point. <laughs> I had to see it again and I fucking hated it oh. it was like my god what a dumb fucking bullshit movie. Jesus well, Christ. <laughs> well, now we, we have more. We didn't talk about Halloween yet. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the felt, winner. That's I the winner. Felt, yeah, I thought <laughs> that was the winner. Holy fucking shit, dude. Holy, what happened? Yeah, what? it completely missed, like, everything that, like, the last one did. You would think that would have, like, the directors of the first movie were cut off, got a terrible deal, and they left mid-production, and somebody had to come in and rewrite it. No, it was that the same guy and same team. That is exactly what, what happened. It was all part of their original, like, pitch for, like, a sequel trilogy, which is weird. Evil dies tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I guess, but like he kill again. I said this when we talked about Halloween kills a man the first time. In this new rebooted universe, he killed four people one night forty years ago, <laughs> Ryan. and and they're like, he's been haunting this town for forty years. Let's end this tonight. And it's like, what's your? Pr- Nothing he, else happened in this town in 40 years? He poisoned our water supply and put a plague within our houses. He did? No. <laughs> we just stand around and wait until he does. <laughs> yeah. It is that movie. Yeah. So, and he's just standing there like, oh. <laughs> J.B. Lee Curtis, who is great. Yeah. Um, Once again, he's just spends the entire time in the hospital. God bless her, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You would have think this was filmed in COVID, and she yeah. had COVID, but no, it was filmed before. It's so weird. I'm still deeply curious what's gonna happen. I the yeah, next movie. I have no clue. I feel like they like, had to have had. I feel like they had to have had like a great idea for like a new beginning and a new end. Yes. Like, yeah. Well, it has to be a trilogy because that's what. So something's got to be in the middle. Yeah, and they're like, how about he just kills more people? It's like, <laughs> oh, oh I can't we call it that, that, dude. So I don't know. I have. I am deeply disappointed with that movie. It is yeah, number one. Yeah. Number one. Okay, I will. Watch Especially, it as I winner. rewatched eighteen recently, and I remember coming out of eighteen. I didn't like it very much. I rewatched. It, I was like, "Oh, this is great. I yeah. like it." Yeah, it's it's a solid. Like, it's a great. Yeah, that kind of. I don't of think film. I like it that much, but I haven't rewatched it. But yeah. So it makes no sense, especially if this movie is supposed to take place five minutes yeah, after the first after. movie. <laughs> no, it makes no goddamn sense at all. And I don't know what the hell you, the corner you wrote yourself in for this third movie. But whatever. Anyways, Halloween Kills is the most disappointing movie of 2021. Uh, Halloween it, ends it. is this year, right? Halloween ends is this year, yep. Well, we'll Maybe see. it'll also be a Peacock um, original. Ooh. That'll save us some money. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Uh, best performance is somebody want to read? The, the... I would love to. Best performances, we have Kristen Stewart in Spencer, Rebecca Hall in The Night House, Bo Burnham in... In inside, um, oh god, how do you pronounce her name, Carrie? <laughs> Miam no Alder. Miam Alder from Censor, Censor Girl from Censor. Uh, S- Simu Liu from uh, Shane Chi. Uh, Tony Leone from Shane Chi. Bob Odenkirk from Nobody. 
uh, Nicolas Cage, Pig, Carrie Ann Moss, The Matrix Resurrections, Dev Patel, The Green Knight, Daniel Kaluuya, Judas and the Black Messiah, Lakeith Stanfield, Judas and the Black Messiah, Andrew Garfield, Tick, Tick, Boom. God damn it. <sighs> Baby Annette, Annette, <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen, Writers of Justice, and Taylor Page in Zola. Woo! Woo! What a list. That of... is cinema. What a list. Of... A lot of good performances, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this there's is, a lot of stuff this is, here. This is a tough one. <laughs> uh, it's it is weird coming back to from the negative stuff to the positive stuff when I have yeah. to be thoughtful. Um, is Bo Burnham giving a performance in Inside? Um, I don't know. I think, I think if he's not, then that's deeply troubling. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some more therapy. It's, inside is so hard to yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't I'm not even cutting it. I'm just saying out loud it's a weird one. Yeah, to no, have. I don't know. It, I, it's a I weird agree. one to talk about in this category. I love All Eyes on Me, and I think that is that is the most honest performance of it. Like it is a de it is cosmically depressingly hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that's so true. But so yeah, I don't know. I just want to say that that's I don't know what to do with him right there. Yeah, I don't know. Carrie Ann Moss, we can cut Carrie Moss. I just fucking love Carrie Ann Moss. I love the Matrix. What the hell happened to Carrie Ann Moss? I need to look up what happened? Why did nobody work with her after The Matrix? Um, she's in a little movie called The Bye Bye Man, George. Oh. I know that. Why? <laughs> what do you What do you mean? <laughs> she's in Horizon Forbidden West for some reason. I oh. love her so much in this movie. I love uh, Neo and Trinity uh, in that movie. Um, Has there been a Matrix like collector's thing? Dude, because you were wanting, I'm pissed. Because you were okay. wanting to get something like that. You right? asked me, so because there was the the, the previous four K set with the one, two, and three. Yeah, and there were individual Blu-ray boxes, but for the four movies, they did the dumb fat single Blu-ray box, and I hate those so much. <laughs> give me individual, or give me death, or give me a fancy package. Don't give me the Walmart brand. 40 great action movies in one <laughs> box. <laughs> Warner Brothers Pictures, you motherfuckers. Yeah, Anyways. like it's and Matrix. You'd think they'd put like more effort into Even that. like bad subsets within those. Because I have ones that are like little book booklets inside mm -hmm. the big thick box, which I don't hate. But I have one Stephen King set that's just one tall. Oh like, my pen, god. And you just it. stack the discs on it. And like, those this those ones are the worst. <laughs> you are correct. Horrible. We might as well not even put the rings. Yeah, we just threw them in there. Yeah. Yeah. Just put them in there. <laughs> Anyways, we who cares? <laughs> it's silver bullet. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Anyways, I think we already cut her, but yeah, she's great. <laughs> Baby Annette doesn't. Baby Annette <laughs> is a presence. I can't believe not we cut straight. Carrie and Boss before Baby Annette in a net. Jesus. What's your Carrie, boss? why is this a performance? <laughs> You saw her. She it's, captivated the world. It's wood. Sure. What, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, do you also baby like, Annette? Do you also like ba, 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 baby you know, Annette? I nominated her, but no one else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Uh, I I understand. Okay, baby I know. Baby Annette, ba, 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 baby. That's how she's, it went, right? She's superstar. Yep. She's a big. Yeah, she's God. a big. Everybody loves her. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Um, who is Taylor Page in Zola? I assume she played uh, uh, Zola. Uh, she's Zola. Okay, yeah. she's the main girl. She's very good, but as somebody who didn't like Zola that much, yeah, I don't like it. It's that hard much for me to. Well, I, like thought, I just thought she was fantastic. No, yeah, she, she was fantastic. She, she did the job of she being the, job. the narrator, driving the entire film, being the force behind the film. I just thought she was amazing. Yep. She, she, she. I can't think of anyone who could have done that kind of role better because yeah. she really just killed it. But. I I don't feel like it hands on Cuter the hands on the list, everyone. unfortunately. It's a good movie. I want to rewatch Zola. I should rewatch it as well. There. I think I like it. It's it was I had fun the whole time. I just don't know why I don't feel passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Carrie, you're the only one who saw Writers of Justice. I like I like I want to see it. it it's looks, so good. It looks. Good. I think you guys would like it. It's just Mads Mikkelsen doing his classic bit of being like at the same time. In, at a certain point in time, just always being quietly rage-filled, but also mm -hmm. deeply introspective. And it's just, when he's on screen, you're just like, what's he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, 
a tumultuous storm of emotions behind a sad face. And I'm just like, I love that. I love you. I've seen Chaos Walking. I know. Yeah, you exactly. Well, uh, you know. Do, do you think it? Do you think it's going to be one of your favorites? It's not of the one year? of my favorites okay. of the year. I just wanted to shout it. Okay. Out. Well, I mean, it is one of my favorites of the year, but in terms of some of the other stuff that's here. Um, we can take off Bob Odenkirk from Nobody. He does a great he's job. So good he's so movie. good. I still have not one, seen that. Another one I need to rewatch. Yeah, that movie's awesome. He's fantastic in it, but I don't know if he's top three. That's what I gotta say, really. Yeah. So he's very good in it, though. Yep. Um, I I will say, uh, Simu Liu is great in Shang Chi. Yeah. I love all the I love how all the press he's getting, all the opportunities he has, because he's a very like nice, warm person. I like seeing him, you know, at the Oscars and other things. Um. The best performance in Shane Chi is Tony yeah, Leone, it's him. which is it even fair because he's like yeah, one of the greatest actors really of all good. time. Um, but also, he's not all gonna stand on this. List. No, unfortunately, cannot not. <laughs> overstate how he is the best villain the Marvel movies have ever had. Yes, and how he is just one of the best actors. He's great ever, yeah. in my opinion. But for for this year, I'm he's I gotta put getting... my foot down. I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> I you can call me anytime though and talk if you want. <laughs> I know I know he's been waiting for it. <laughs> um, does uh is Niam Alger the main ca- the main actor in Censor? Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't like her that much. I mean, oh, I like what? her. <laughs> I like her. I, but I, I loved this performance. <laughs> I thought she was great. Um, as, like I love any any film where a character slowly goes crazy um especially when like it works very well it's honestly one of my favorite genres um for this list i will probably say no and we should cut it but that is one i just wanted to shout out she is great i've not seen her in anything else but she is someone who i'm definitely gonna look forward to seeing other stuff that she's in uh in the future good movie censor very good um Man, it really sucks. I did not rewatch Judas and the Black Messiah because I fucking I loved that, that I movie. Still haven't seen it. I loved it so much. I was gonna watch it, but if, if you had to, if you had to pick a performance, Daniel Kalu or Lakeith Stanfield. If I was to cut one of them first, I yeah. would cut Lakeith Stanfield. Really? Daniel Kalu is the star of that movie. Really? He I is. felt the other way. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I really, only, I, I watched it. And I really <laughs> like Lakeith Stanfield though, so I might be a little biased. He's very much. He's very good at. Playing a rat and being incredibly <laughs> conflicted I about love him. being a rat. Really I, I'm re- I need to watch the third season of Atlanta. Um, mm. He's very good in that show. He's he's very he's very rat in that show. <laughs> um, but I think we can cut both of them. I'm oh be really? Okay. I, but and I also called Dave, cut Dave Patel, but that's me because I didn't like the Dave Green Knight very much. But that's just me. I like Green Knight a lot, but I think the things I like about it are outside of his performance. That's fair. So I would be at peace with cutting him, but he very good. He is very good, and he yeah, he's great. great. And I like the. I want to watch that movie again, maybe with a fixed um, font version of the film. <laughs> Please some, God, some um, that would be great. It's on Showtime, so I have. And I I bought the Blu-ray. You did buy the Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they didn't do their fancy Blu-ray for that. Yet. I'm no, sure they will. Yeah, and there's I'm sure no I'll Why are they? Why I'm is it idiot. taking them so long? I don't. To have they're this weird, fancy dude. Thing they're weird. For just Lamb, and no like point. I like Lamb, but why is Lamb the first one? Maybe they knew that Lamb would be harder to sell. Yeah, so they're like, like let's Blu-ray. put it in this thing so the yeah. fucking freaks will buy it. And I did. <laughs> Damn. Um. All right. So now we have. Now we're in it. Now we have Kristen Stewart and Spencer, Rebecca Hall in The Night House, Bo Burnham inside, Nicolas Cage Pig, and Andrew Garfield. Tick, tick, boom. I feel like I know where this is going. Um, but I will say Andrew Garfield, tick, tick, boom, is great. I have great. only seen a few seconds of that, and I thought that was fantastic. He I is really fantastic. fantastic. He's really good in that I movie. Really, really wanted him to win Best Actor. I yeah. think. I, I mean, think he, he didn't. Can... Car- it, like, it didn't seem like he stood a chance. Oh, it did. An it. Upset would have been awesome. I would have loved that. It, it didn't seem like he was gonna win. I was surprised that Will Smith won. I felt like no one was expecting. I, f- I don't think like that was an upset, especially after what happened before. <laughs> People were very, very upset. At that point, the cosmic universe made the decision of yeah. who's going to win. <laughs> he broke the speed force and changed exactly. the timeline. <laughs> Why isn't um, that? Oh, you, I, never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, yeah, if you, but, but this is get, this is just getting hard, and I'm trying to 
find out where I where I land here. Um, because I feel like if I was gonna cut something, it it would probably be Bo Burnham and then Andrew Garfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just look well, at it, yeah. Well, cause I I agree, cause like I love Bo Burnham and like for inside is like we're writing it in basically because yeah, yeah, yeah. we all love it so much but i don't know how much it really applies in yeah most of it's, these it's categories. hard because it's it's half stand-up half like right weird art insane project thing so it's it's hard to like categorize yeah. it but it is it is going to show that and it's it's great that it's all him and all of the like technical aspects of that are super impressive so if we had like a like a editing yeah. category. You not this win. podcast, though. You, you would win. <laughs> we have the Do Not Go In There Award instead. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, something yeah, yeah. we prioritize our time with. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then it's hard. Th- this, these four, Kristen Stewart, Becca Hall, Nicolas Cage, and then Andrew Garfield, that is, that is very tough. That's some heavy hitters. Me. Yeah. Um, I feel like, just just to, for the respect, I, I feel like, Nicholas Cage over Andrew Garfield. It's hard. Um, Nick, Nic- I love- Nicholas Cage in Pig is my per- favorite performance. Of okay, the year. I'm just that's saying. why I'm really? saying. Okay, that, I'm just that, saying that I love. Right that, now. That's probably <laughs> close to my favorite movie of the year. But I'm like, his performance in that movie is very subtle, and it's the a lot of the yeah. script and the way it's shot and the way it's paced that really, he really it all comes together. Um, and, I don't, he's and, definitely not acting on himself to elevate this movie, is what I'm saying. Yeah, he's great, but yeah. I, I think I'm going to cut Andrew Garfield tick to right. then. Um, Make it easy. So then we have... Take the coward's win. Then we have Kristen Stewart, <laughs> Rebecca Hall, Nicolas Cage. I think you guys know my favorite performance of the year is Kristen Stewart and Spencer. Um, but I also love Rebecca Hall. I love... Oh, yeah. I don't know. All of three of these. I don't know. They're very... It's, this, is, this might be the challenge of the year. Let's talk about Rebecca Hall. Oh uh, I don't know who wants to start, but what I liked about I haven't talked about the Nighthouse a lot, I guess. Um, I don't love it as much as you do, but I like it a lot, and I think Rebecca Hall is definitely at the center of it. She, she just does that character of somebody who lost someone that she truly loved just out of nowhere, and truly does not have to do with her life anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, she plays that tragic character just so real. And so well, and the, the fact that when she's haunted by a ghost, she's so over and so confused with her life that by the time she's like haunted, she's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Come out. I don't care, dude. <laughs> like, seriously. And at the end of the, even though, like, it was, oh, man, the scene, when we get to the scene where she's like, she's making it out with who she thinks is her, the ghost of her husband, that's a scene that could have flopped so oh, god yeah, yeah, yeah. damn That could hard. be so ridiculous so quick. But the whole character, like you see, like this is the point where she, her, all the the fake facade, uh, and the toughness just comes down. And uh, yeah, I love her in that movie. But that's all I gotta say. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who else is. If anything wants to say anything I mean, about Rebecca, I, Hall. I just, I just agree with all of that. <laughs> okay, I yeah. agree with all of that yeah. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's why this is the, this is a difficult one. Okay, uh, for the show, but yeah. And Here's then, the sewer, it's good. <laughs> I I don't know what to say about it other than like it's just amazing. She's like, so good in that movie. Like it's just it's just the the classic Kristen Stewart like performance, but just like elevated on this like Oscar stage, and it's just Her accent is a little high. It it's is a, a little, little high. high. <laughs> um but man it's it's so good i i love that movie so much i it's one of those things where like i don't want to watch it because like i like it so much and Mm -hmm. i know if i like allow myself to watch it i'll just keep watching it again and again (laughs) um and i don't want to be that person because then i fear that like i'll stop liking the movie because because that's like what i did like as a kid like oh i love this movie i'm gonna watch it a thousand times Mm -hmm. and i'm like man i hate the dark night now (laughs) Anyways, Carrie, do you have any nice words to say about Nicolas Cage and Pig? Oh my god. It's just... <clears throat> I don't know. His performance is just so tender and rich. <laughs> it just draws you in so much while you're watching it. Just because he is so subdued in the movie, but there's just that that conscious... Like, it's sort of similar to the what I liked about Mads Mikkelsen's performance. There's just this quiet tumultuous sadness and he just 
plays it really well, but also really warmly. And I'm just like, I love you so much and you're fucking killing it. And it's just it's another example of when Nicolas Cage does something fantastic. Everyone's like, Nicolas Cage can act? It's, it's like, like he's where won you an, been? He's won an Oscar before. <laughs> <He's> amazing. <laughs> It's like he just chooses He's just in debt. He just chooses to make these crazy <laughs> movies. And when you watch those crazy movies, he goes all That's out. That's true. Like any other actor in like Wicker Man, like wouldn't do that scene. And that's yeah. what and that's something that people point like this movie's too look at him. It's like, are you kidding me? He's losing his He's mind. Going for it. And like yeah. th- you just have to respect that. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Nicolas yeah. Cage. Part of me is the seniority of Nicolas Cage. I don't want to give it to him. I kind of want to give fair. it to Kristen Stewart, Rebecca Hall. Uh, and I can we say we had been new that Nicolas Cage be good. Yeah, and my yeah. thing again with Pig is like I like the the whole as more. It's not just Nicolas Cage for me. Mm-hmm. So I don't That's know. That's fair. I, I think I think why I choose uh, Spencer over the Night House in this category is because that movie is the performance. The Night House, mm-hmm. her performance, like, makes this ridiculous idea work. And there's a lot of, like, cool visual stuff that amplifies the movie. But for Spencer, that movie just works because it was made for her and she just yeah. destroys it. Right. Like, um, it's, a super, it's, great. it's a super stylized version oh, yeah. of a biopic. Oh, yes. But also, like, if it was... A performance that wasn't compelling. It, it would, would not work. Yeah, one hundred percent. And also, that'd be just... the end of Kirsten Stewart proper. Or, or it would be a forgettable movie. Remember that one time Kirsten Stewart played Princess Diana? Yeah. That yeah. was weird. She did, an, she did another Princess Diana thing that no one cared right. about. Yeah. But no, she like killed it, and it was great. Yeah, <sighs> and I I love Rebecca Paul's performance in the Night House. It would probably be my second favorite behind Nicolas Cage, but. Uh, to Ryan's point, what I love about the Night House more has to do with the overall concept yeah. and like the build up and it, 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 other things outside of her performance. Mm-hmm. Whereas when I think about Spencer, I just think about Kristen Stewart's performance. All it, right. It, outside of like you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying. All no. right, Kristen Stewart wins then, in Ooh, my opinion. Wow. Okay. Winner. All right, Kirsten, please give us a call to give let us give you the award. (laughs) We are begging you. (laughs) You keep ignoring them. (laughs) All right, now that's best perform uh, best performance, folks. Uh, I went by a lot faster than I thought it would. That's fine, though. I think I think I think for both of those awards, we both kind of we all kind of knew a little bit, (laughs) like what what it would. When it got to when it got closer, I didn't know where it was going to go for best performance, but uh, (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Holy shit. Stand out moment's always a lot of fucking lot. words. I, I'm gonna... I, can, I can read this one if you want. Okay. Do you... All right. Do you... I'm going to pull it up here because it's at least a, a straight line instead of a fucking... <laughs> if that helps you, Carrie. I don't know. That would help me. I'm fine. Okay, then. All right. You can... Stand out moment, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, one of our, fa- our favorite moments of the year. Uh, and we got to pick our three favorite. It's not... All right, baby. We got... Ghost making out from the night house. We have the raid from Judas and the Black Messiah. We have I am a revolutionary from Judas and the Black Messiah. We have reading the suicide note from the night house. We have you gave my kid a C from the night house. We have soup time from Spencer. We have the cycling reporter from the French Dispatch. Remember the French Dispatch? Yeah. <laughs> We have Visiting Her Childhood Home from Spencer. We have Christmas with the Boys from Spencer. We have the bus scene from Nobody. And we have the bus scene from (laughs) Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We have the fight club scene from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We have the final fight scene from (laughs) Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We have that music video from Lamb. We have Everything on Planet Caladan from Dune. We have Delivering Bradley Cooper slash John Peters a Waterbed from Licorice Pizza. Yeah, remember Licorice Pizza? We haven't brought it up at all. <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk about that in performances at all. That's funny. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Who cares? The Oscars forgot about that movie, so so did we. Also, yes, yeah, Fair true. enough. <laughs> uh, we have The Aspect Ratio from Censor. We have The Opening Number, a.k.a. So May We Start from Annette. We have The Restaurant Scene, None of It Is Real from Pig. We have The Ending from Pig. We have the prison brawl from Malignant. We have the Furby attack from Mitchells vs. the Machines. We have Ray Goes Splat from <laughs> Evangelion 3.0 plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the ending sequence from The Green Knight. We have the ending from St. Maud. 
We have the final fight from Suicide Squad. We have, oh, this is my favorite. We have Patrick Wilson wielding the big hammer and smashing the table <laughs> in slow motion from The Conjuring 3. The devil made me do it. Uh, the sex scene from House of Gucci. We have Andrew Garfield appears from Spider-Man No Way Home. All Eyes on Me from Bo Burnham Inside. I can't meet tonight. I'm having a yard sale and it's going better than I thought. From Barb and Star <laughs> goes to Vista Vista Del Mar. Uh, when the beach made those guys old from the beach that makes you old. Uh, breaking bones due to calcium deficiency from old. Uh, the opening sequence from the beta test. Uh, the bread slicer from Fear Street 1994. And, of course, Flash enters the Speed Force from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Can we just give this to Z- <laughs> Flash? Not, it makes not this. only the best moment from this year, but the best moment in a film of all time. All time. <laughs> the Oscars have done the terrible mistake of giving people, uh, one, I guess, they they could be a bunch of bitches and, co- and get their thing that they genuinely care about as a thing to give a shout out to the Oscars, or we can make it a bit. So I'm asking for 2022. Let's make Michael Morbius trend on the Yes! Oscars. Morbius Nation, rise Come up! On. Come on! What's going to be the standout moment from Morbius that we will flood the Oscar uh, theme? <laughs> I know, there's so many options. Uh, what if we make it be the whole thing, Morbius? They have to play the whole thing in the fucking clip show. I oh, this is hard to, this is hard to start. Yeah, um so. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try and cut something that I like about it, just so we, this list is re- readable. <laughs> yeah. I love I so the reason 3 uh, Shang-Chi moments are on here is cuz the action is so fucking good in that movie, man. Have you bought this movie, George? I feel like it a lot. But all the physical all Disney physical shit sucks ass. It is does. the problem because yeah, yeah. and they also like good literally books, it's though. the worst for like the Disney Plus version is better than the 4K disc oh, because okay. it's got the IMAX version, so it's it's better aspect ratio. That that, sucks. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so, uh, but we can cut all three. I just wanted to once again say that the action in that movie is so well done, and it's such a breath of fresh air, and I love watching it. I love seeing it. It's pretty good. Uh, anyways, that's three. Oh, actually, I'm gonna cut one more. Um, uh, the only Dune thing here is because I love all this stuff. In the House of Trades planet of Planet Catadan. Mm-hmm. Like all that cool, like looking, uh, looks like it's Irish looking somewhere in Eastern Europe, fucking sh- shots uh, by the fucking ocean. Uh, all that shit I loved a lot. And then we got to the fucking sand planet, like a bunch of losers. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, that's what I'll cut. That's what, that's, that's it. That's it. Fair. Who, who, wants, to, who wants to go next? Um, Andrew Garfield appeared in Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, yeah. He was very good at the That time. was very good. I was very excited. I been... added this because he's the best part of that movie. Yeah. Like, without a doubt. I will say <laughs> it is the most Tobey Maguire thing when he shows up and he's like, oh. <laughs> he turns out and he's like, well, what am I doing oh, here? No. Whoa. Hey. This is crazy. That's just some guy. This is what yeah. I was wearing on the day. <laughs> Where Andrew Garfield is genuinely a moment of being like, let's fucking go yeah. when he shows up. Let's uh, go, game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's that moment. But it also, I feel a little numb about it now. Yeah. At the time, at the moment, it was really cool. But. You know what? I like the part in the beach that made you old, where the beach made those guys old. But I don't think it hangs. I'm no, sorry, I guys. I don't think that hangs. Uh, what, 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 uh, the, when they introduce a guy as what the fuck is his name? Oh my god, midsize sedan. Mid-size sedan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. Very we can good also stuff. talk about the other part that I personally nominated from old, where the, the <laughs> what this nightmare? Oh looking, yeah, that was so cool. I thought it was Ito looking yes! ass. It was so yes. awesome. I loved this part. I forgot until right then. Yes, when that lady goes, tries to fucking run away, and yeah, she, she's holding up a big rock. It, and as it was established several times earlier in the film, she has a calcium deficiency. I think that's literally at the, nauseum. I think that's literally the first thing this character yeah. says in the film. And uh, the weight of the rock breaks her arm. And since time is moving so quickly, it immediately sets right where it broke, as if it had been broken like that for months. And then she breaks all of her bones and turns into a crystallized pretzel. And I'm just like, this is disgusting. This is the best thing yeah, I've ever like seen. Like you said, like you said, it's like a Junji Ito fucking it's nightmare. Thing. It's horrifying. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I people, forgot about people, that. People don't give old enough of a chance. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's kind of bad, but it's also amazing. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, Carrie, you w- recently watched Barb and Star to Go to Vista Lamar. Mm-hmm. I added this moment because this is my favorite joke from the movie. 
I was really funny. I had to stop because I was <laughs> laughing so hard at this joke. And that joke is, I can't meet tonight. I'm having a yarn sale. It's going better than I ex- expected, yeah. I think is the exact line. That's so funny. It's so funny. It's so stupid. That, it, it works so well in the world of this film. That movie was hilarious. It's amazing. It's one of the funniest <laughs> movies of the year, uh, for sure. That movie... Uh... Because I watched it after watching uh, Don't Look Up and Belfast, oh, I think. Whoa. So it was it was two Oscar. No, I watched Coda and Don't Look Up. Oh, okay. And then I was like... <laughs> so I need I, something nice. I, I need something fun. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I liked that movie a lot. Uh, I like how that movie made me... I had never felt endeared to Fifty Shades guy yeah, yeah, until yeah, yeah. I saw him in that oh, movie. Oh, he's and amazing. I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> Oh, oh, I get it. And like he's funny too, <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious. like amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar is a masterpiece. I think. Yes, uh, <laughs> I I wish I wish we were able to know it for more stuff, but I haven't I haven't seen it recently. Um, and you just watched it before after we made the list, so it's yeah. ineligible. Well, you know, fuck whatever. You. <laughs> but yeah, that movie is great. That is my favorite joke That's of that movie. movie. <laughs> uh, the bread slicer from Fear Street. I just like that it kill. It looked pretty I cool. That kill it pretty looked good pretty kill. good. But I don't know if it's going to make it. No, probably have. not. But And with that, I like. I didn't like the Furbies and the Mitchells. Versus the Mitchells. <gasps> what? I love that movie. Yeah. I like that movie a lot. And, and that's a like great the sequence. Me and Greg were dying at yeah. the Furbies. Because I think me and Greg just both have history with Furbies. Okay. So Same like, here. Oh, shit. Fucking I... Furbies are Did you not grow up with Furbies, George? Not really. No. I didn't mm. like them. I didn't get it. I, I, I grew up with Furbies. My parents were obsessed with getting me a Furby when like they were like the, a the thing. Deal. Yeah. Um and then and now they have six hundred Furbies Great. in their house. One day they're gonna flip those, you know. <laughs> they're trying. Uh-huh. My sister's trying to make long Furbies. Oh yeah, you told me. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's isn't there a long Furby in the Yeah, vicinity? I have a long Furby around here somewhere. Right that was that here. that was her first test test run. <laughs> Um, yeah, she wants to make nice, more. He's a nice boy. Yeah, he's a fun guy. <clears throat> Anyways, can we cut that or no? I mean, I'm not very emotionally attached to it, so I guess you got to talk to Ryan. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff here, so fine. We can cut the bus scene from Nobody. It's fucking great. It's really good. It's very good. Okay, let me just find it I real it. quick. Okay, it's thank just you. again, it's that action John Wick style. It's Bob Odenkirk being the shit out of people in a bus. Yeah, it looks while, fucking great. Whilst being a dad. Yeah, it looks fantastic. <laughs> it's done well and it's done believable. It's good. Very good. Very good. Man. Uh, the final fight from the Suicide Squad is great. I did not expect it to be that cool. It is very cool. That I, movie is so good. I expect good. a lot it of things very in that movie good. that it's, yeah. It makes me, like, very excited for the new Guardians movie because I just feel like James Gunn has now proven that he can just do whatever he wants and mm-hmm. no one cares. So I'm hoping like he delivers like a a wild, you know, end to that. But mm-hmm. there there's a lot of good stuff here. So I, I feel like I want to cut the final fight from the Suicide Squad. Big Star Man. I mean just the part where she goes inside the eyeball. Oh, yeah. Very just the moment of pure shock all of us experienced. Because I think every single one of us watching that movie expected her to like stick into the eyeball but and like no. hang there. But then she entered the eyeball and we all flipped out. I, I remember I remember Donna Joe being like, Oh, like she had a she had a visceral reaction. And maybe <laughs> the sea of rats entered the <laughs> starfit. That movie fucking rocks. That's a great that, that is great. I love that. Oh shit. Mm. All right, I'm really passionate about Patrick Wilson wielding the big hammer. That's funny. That's well. funny. <laughs> that movie's awesome. <laughs> I can't. That should have been on Best Surprise. I don't know if we talked about that on Best Surprise because I was like, I was shit talking that movie constantly, and then it came out and I was like, what the what the fuck? This Who is entertaining. Who made this good? Stop it. Do you want me to cut it? I'll cut it. But, okay. But, oh, wait. Oh, I accidentally cut, it some, cut something else. <gasps> Oops. Hold on. But, yeah. Just that entire sequence. There's so many funny things in that movie. Like, uh, lest we not forget the, the line delivery of the river. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows exactly what he's doing. And I love that about Patrick oh, Wilson. Patrick Wilson. 
We, he, we can cut the cycling reporter from the French Dispatch. That is just Paul. Yeah, it's just him. That's just his stuff. Just to the nth degree. Just That's condemned. the only part of that movie I liked. Hey, yeah. there we go. It was good. <laughs> so look at that. Crazy. That's a fourth of the movie, apparently. Um, You know, I keep looking back to the sex scene in House of Gucci, <laughs> and then I'm like, no, it stays here longer. <laughs> I, I, like, I I'll share this with the listeners. My favorite part of that was I recently took a flight, and someone was watching it in front of me to like my left, and just the panic on this lady was like, ah! <laughs> and it's just so long. So she has no like, oh no, you're gonna, you need to just fast forward right now because it's not. And she doesn't fast forward. She just does it. She keeps like ah, and then she pauses it and ah. <laughs> And again, it's funny because it's just so aggressive. It's not <laughs> explicit. It's just like, no, it's just like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, what my favorite part of that scene is I, I told a coworker about that scene and she had told me like, like, yeah, I had a girl's night and we decided to watch House of Gucci for some reason. You know what, Ryan? You were right. <laughs> that was an interesting scene to watch with friends drunk. <laughs> And I was like, hell That's yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that actually that actually stays for a oh, bit longer, yeah. actually. Let's keep it. Um, I feel like we should cut some stuff that has multiple entries. Okay. Um, so oh, oh that's hard though. So <laughs> it is hard though. So what is the best scene from uh the night house? Carrie, is it the ghost making out scene? Is it um these are not in order, which does not help. Nope. Uh, you gave my child a C or reading the suicide note. Mm. Giving my child the C and reading the suicide note are both examples of her like pushing her sadness <laughs> her, onto people. I was gonna say her bluntly talking about how fucked up her life yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So those are very <laughs> similar scenes. Um the ghost making out scene is very different because that's more of like her letting go and allowing herself to feel vulnerable mm -hmm. um i know what i personally like more <laughs> because uh, rebecca hall like really sells the whole like trauma dumping thing right so and when i think of trauma dumping i think of the you gave my child a c <laughs> really because like that scene. because we're not really clear as to what happened yet yeah it's explicit there yeah yeah, yeah. and this is a great introduction out. To let the viewer know what is going on in a way without, like, her being like, oh, I just got back from yeah, my it does husband's this character, funeral. Yeah. Um, so that's why that is my favorite moment I from that. I think that's a good one. My yeah. thing with this is, like, I don't know if there's one moment. Cause I, it's it, hard, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Cause that like, I want to put also, I like when she goes to the bookstore. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. She does that. I <laughs> Take your hair down. It's like, so yeah, good. Because you fucked my husband and I'm asking you nicely. <laughs> Fucking so terrifying. She's so like good. I, like, <laughs> just like the smallest like girl was walking it. into that aisle. The books are like, ooh, I'm looking the yeah. fuck out of here. It's me holding my copy of uh, fucking uh, Christine by Stephen King. And I'm like, ooh, 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 <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I think of this. I don't know. I think ultimately, I don't know if ultimately any moment from this movie is going to make it to oh, the top. Okay, I, yeah. I do get that a lot. Because, like, uh, when I... Because uh, if you gave, you gave my, 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 my son a C as the best moment from that movie, it doesn't really encapsulate the moment right. of that movie. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't show what the cool things about that movie yeah. are. Yeah. And all the cool stuff is, there's not, like, a block of cool stuff. Yeah. It's, like, peppered throughout that makes yeah. it all good. That's what I think. All right. So, so I love how we're just gonna wind up. We're gonna cut the night house somehow. All right, let's just cut the night house then. Ouch. The night house is too good for this category. Exactly. <laughs> Cannot be defined in down one, into moment. one moment. <laughs> um, I guess similar. We have three Spencer moments. Um, I believe. Am I reading? This yeah, right? you're right. We got the soup, soup time, Christmas with the boys, and visiting her childhood home. They're all together. Okay. Uh, my Fairmont Spencer is Christmas with the Boys. It's personally. very good. I it's like very that. good. It feels very natural. And I love just like how she's a mother, but she's being very honest with her feelings with like her kids. And like, you don't really see that. And like a lot of moms aren't that way, <laughs> if we're being honest. Yeah. Um, and it's just very nice to see that kind of relationship. Um, it like... 
these three characters who understand their that their life is very not ordinary and them all being very honest yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. I I really love that approach. I, I have no idea if that's how the family really was. No. But sure. in in the context of the film, I just think that's very just very beautiful. And easily my favorite part of that movie, which is weird because there's so many other really cool that's stuff. That's another in that one film. that there's a lot of Yeah. A lot of really good moments. Like the ending is good. The stuff with Sally Hawkins is really cool. Oh, good, God. leading to the "All I Need Is a Miracle" driving out is mm-hmm. great. All I need is a miracle. Yeah, it's pretty good. All I um, need is Morpheus. No. <laughs> yeah, I think of these, I would agree that the Christmas one is probably the strongest, but I like them all a lot. I like the visiting the childhood home only because it gives us that moment where she's dancing in the hall and yes. the soundtrack's really going hard. The very soundtrack's good. fucking great. It's hard. It's hard to find that scene just because it feels very like, just like all over the yeah. place, which yeah. I love, but it's hard to like. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and you really like Soup Time. Jordan. I love Soup Time. It's good pretty part. good. I very like it. Again, well, it's all celebrated by the music as well. Again, that's the first moment where it introduces the like surreal yes. parts of it where yeah. it's like oh there's some weird dreamy nightmare stuff yeah. happening yeah. Here it's also too. the first time you see uh the husband in the oh, whole yeah. film which is like a weird sequence to have him like in a good way it's just a weird it's just weird like like she sees him and then suddenly like her brain starts breaking more than it already right. was right yeah um but, i don't know <laughs> We yeah, could, we, I don't could, know. we could come back to that and right. delete delete some. Well, of that love. plan didn't work. All right. Well, I'm I cut them and I'm leaving Chris time with the boys because it felt fine. like we were we yeah, were agreeing fair. that 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 was. Wait, what are we cutting? Um, now it's now it's just uh, Christmas time with the boys. We cut the other stuff. <laughs> he cut expense. soup time All and childhood right. home. Unless you disagree, George. Yeah, I, don't know I, I just felt that. like that's how it was going. Uh, I would keep. All three. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> the top three are three different boys from Spencer. I mean, <laughs> this podcast is not biased in any way whatsoever. Well, I mean, I like see. the lobster part in the Christmas time with the boys, but it's not the. I don't know. <laughs> I feel stronger about the other two. Um, my, I guess for, uh, for me, that's three. I don't, if I was to rank those three moments, oh be really? The, oh yeah. Man. Oh no. <laughs> So let's well, let's come back to that yeah, one. We'll come back. Okay, okay. What about uh? What about uh? I have no memory of the part where Ray goes splat from that. That movie. is my I don't, favorite. I don't know what that means? It probably will not hang, but this is my favorite moment. <laughs> Um, when does it happen? This is when they're in oh, the village. I remember now. They're yes. in the village, and Shinji has been like in a depressive cycle. Yes, he's just like yeah, waiting yeah, by the water. Yes, yes. And everyone in the town is so nice to him, and he's just like, like he finally talks for the first time, and is like, "Why the fuck is everyone so nice to me?" And she's just like, "It's so wonderful. I love it so much. It's so sad." I forgot about the exploding. Part, and then though. she goes splat, and yeah, and, and, and it just kind of like, like yeah. it's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> it was like he had this. He for him, he felt like he had this. He found fi- someone finally told him the stuff that like he really needed to hear. And he felt like he had like a friend, and then that friend is gone in a horrified way that is only, only good can only be seen in like a series like this. So I love this. It's it's such a sad moment, um, in that film. Okay, and I didn't remember it, so that that helps me. Remember okay, it. but yeah, I love that. That that can we can cut that because Carrie has not seen it. But I I would if if yeah. we wanted to keep it, I would I would be thrilled personally. Yeah, we can keep it then. Awesome. For now. For now. I, mean, I would cut the sex scene from House of Gucci. <laughs> no, George. <laughs> Listen, here's all I'm going to say is 10 years from now, when we're thinking about the year 2022, there is going to be one scene we remember. When Flash enters the Speed Force. <laughs> Shut up. It's going to be when Flash <laughs> enters the House of Gucci. Oh. Fine. Okay. But just so you, we're going to get letters. <laughs> You know, I set the P.O. box Problem. for a reason. <laughs> I got letters. <laughs> oh, man. Um, um, we could talk about the opening sequence from the yeah. beta test, because I nominated that. It's very good. That's very good. rocked my ass. 
And, and then I the really rest of the movie. The rest yeah. of the movie proceeded to not rock my ass. Yeah. It's on Hulu. <laughs> have you have you watched it yet? Not yet. Hmm. I was going to like I started to rewatch it and then I was like, no, nah, I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this right now. I'm not now. in the mood right I don't now. I want to watch this fucking long ass Jim Cummings sex scene. Yeah, there there's a lot of those. Mm-hmm. But the opening sequence, just the the. I love it when a movie does that, just goes balls to the wall immediately. And just to describe, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just the sequence where this woman is clearly in distress and has placed a call to 911 and you don't really know what's going on, but uh, she confronts her husband over the dinner table and uh, she says that she needs a certain amount of money and that she wants to leave him. And then he's just quietly taking it in. And then he just out of nowhere just stabs her in the throat. And then blood gushes from her throat and she tries to escape and is crawling on the ground. It's just immediately high octane brutal. And I thought it was great. Yep, it's great. Fantastic. I'm a big fan of it. But the rest of it, yeah. Yeah. The ghost ship effect, as I like to call it. The ghost ship. True. Very true. (laughs) Uh, Delivering Bradley Cooper a waterbed is the best part of Licorice Pizza. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't love that movie. It's more of like, that's a good film. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel about it. It's like, what what an objectively good piece of film. (laughs) What a well-constructed film. It's strange how... I don't care though. <laughs> I feel like I should. More. I had a good as time a, as with a film it, person, but I, it's not. It doesn't stand out for me. But I had a good time watching it. Yeah, and that's a great moment. It's that's it's their best it's con. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's well shot. It's very it's very funny. And Bradley Cooper's good in that moment. It's, I love how he keeps appearing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's very good. But yeah, I, I cut it. We can get it. We get. We can cut the music video from Lamb. I really like that part. It was funny. That was hilarious. That was a good bit. It was a good bit. Oh, we have two Judas and the Black, Black Messiah moments. George, oh, as, man. as as the George, why didn't you watch this movie again? Yeah, you fucking idiot. Uh, the raid or the I am a revolutionary speech. The raid is just hard because that's stone cold facts of what it happens, is, which yes. is a spoiler alert alert to the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. And also, uh, the real Black life. Messiah's best friend uh, backstabs him, and it ends in a. Oh, that reminds me of this <laughs> book I read once. <laughs> it, it ends in a violent cop raid where everybody gets killed uh, because. Uh, like Keith Stanfield's character rats rats his friend out. Um, that's a hard mo- that's a hard moment. It's a really upsetting moment, especially at the time when it came out. Because again, Jesus Black Messiah was early twenty twenty one, so yes. it was like the year that we just happened, and you saw that moment, and it's just like blood mm. blood boiling. Uh, so yeah, it's a great moment. But I am revolutionary is probably the moment from the year, and unfortunately, because the moment from that movie, my bad. But unfortunately, because I had not seen the movie in a while, I can't fight for it. But that is a... Uh, so, uh, Dan Kalia's character uh, gets arrested at a, cer- at a certain point in the movie. And so he's in jail for a while. Uh, but the Black Panthers keep going. And this is when he comes back. And so it is this big moment. He gives a, ri- a, ri- a rousing speech. And it's just Daniel Kalia acting as fucking ass off and it that is, is so good that, that is like the like acting moment it is so movie. goddamn good it is incredible it is uh it's great um but unfortunately i haven't seen that movie in a while so i cannot fight for it but it is the best apart from the restaurant scene from pig for me and uh the ending of pig is the best acting i've seen in this list it is fantastic so but we can cut it because I just been... you, you want to cut both Judas. And the Black I would Messiah. cut both of them. Okay, All I, right. I can't fight. I can, <laughs> not in good faith. It'd be me like, yeah, at the time in early twenty twenty one, I liked it a lot. It's hard because it came out at a weird time. Yeah. And it was in the Oscars of last year. In the Oscars year. of last year as well. So. Yeah, very weird. Um, great supporting actors in that film. Who was the lead actor? I don't know. Jesse Plemons, I guess. That's probably who the main <laughs> yeah. Was. I forgot Jesse Plemons was in that. Yeah, movie. he's the cop guy. Yeah, of course he was. He's the cop guy who gives uh, Lakeith Stanfield like coupon or something for How, it feels like jesse plemons friend. had has had eight movies since the yeah. pandemic happened <laughs> and there's one every two months it's yeah, crazy this guy this guy works hard. I, I still think it's funny how the power of the dog is the movie where he plays the most normal guy <laughs> interesting um i could talk about the ending sequence from the green knight because i feel like i can't it's remember funny. it super well it's funny it's very funny <sighs> it sucks well because uh, 
what I'm personally talking about when I say the ending sequence is how he goes to, to complete oh, the, the game. Oh, the yes. Game, and yes, then yes. he runs away. And you watch oh, his entire okay, yeah. life play oh, out. Yes. And you're like, wow, this guy really shit the bed. God damn. And then mm-hmm. you're like, and you just watch this entire his life going badly and then it snaps back to him back at the green knight it's like so it's like that's what your life's gonna be if you run away and it's like all right just fucking kill me (laughs) i don't know if that's what it was intended to be delivered from that scene but that's how i took it you made your bed buddy yeah like this this story ends one and also watching this man's life painfully play out and just like watching his entire life in flash before his eyes essentially before he dies i'm just like yeah this is the guy who made a ghost story (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that's very. I'm remembering now. That's that is very. The best good. part of this adventure is when you busted a nut in your in your rag. That's buddy. true. Wait, add that to the list. <laughs> oh, yeah. Busting nut in rag. Cum belt. That's shot. not Laura Cross. Whoa. <laughs> um. Yeah. But yeah, I love that moment, and I think Green Knight is fantastic. But I don't know if there's a lot of love for it in this group. I which li- I respect. I I, I like fair. it a lot. I respect it, but. <laughs> If if you want to cut it, I will not. Already, I will not. I will not fight for you. I I understand. <laughs> I will. I will not fight you. I want to fight for. I would always fight for you, Carrie. You're Thanks. my friend. Thank you. But I would not fight you. Thank you. Because I'm weak and sensitive. Right. <laughs> I really wish I liked the ending from Saint Maud more. It's it's cool. Yeah. The it's ending really in that striking. one is is like it's like five seconds of like oh crap oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes i yeah that one is i really genuinely love it but it's also i don't think it would hang on the list at all but it's <laughs> i rewatched the ending like six times it's it's pretty thing. good it's so fucking awesome all right looks like you're at what care. point are we cutting flash enters the speed <laughs> force? never what are you talking about mm. <laughs> Because, George, if we cut it, it'll just come back because Flash will re-enter the speed force <laughs> and put it back on the list. I'm going to be here. legitly honest. That moment wasn't that. It was kind of cool. It was kind of cool. It was kind of cool. I don't remember that. It's when he entered the speed force. It was the most Flash, oh. it was the most flash thing. I mean, yeah. the Flash hasn't been able to do many Flash things. No, 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 But no. it was cool. It was a very Flash Unless you thing. watch that TV show Unless you watch I don't that think TV. anyone no, watches, no. even though it has nine It's not seasons. even him, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Anyways, moving on with our lives. Um, so I guess we're not cutting Flash into the speed. <laughs> okay, is Flash into the speed? Okay, is this best moment presented by Flash enters the speed force from Zack Snyder's Justice League? As in, it's not actually eligible, but it is presenting the award. I like that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I like so that. Because the Flash, the Flash is going Brought back to you in by time. Flash entering the speed force. Because the Flash is going back to award another film because he's so modest exactly <laughs> um also he was arrested has awesome. to give up his award <laughs> oh, no. so okay great fantastic uh so okay. let's see um, 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 um where do we go from here where do we go from here we, we've got two pig scenes okay then yeah um pig is a fucking incredible movie um for me my personal number one favorite is the restaurant scene, none of it's real from Pig. I'm glad you said that because I completely It agree. is <laughs> fucking incredible. So That's... this is a moment where um, at this point we know that Nicolas Cage's character in the, in this movie was a an incredible chef, just in like just one of the greatest yeah, of all time. Super famous. Yeah, in now. the Pacific Northwest. And he just we know now that he's a legend in the area. And so we go to this restaurant while we're trying to figure out where the fuck is that damn pig? Uh, and so th- one of those leads leads us to this restaurant where Nicolas Cage realizes that the person who's running this really fucking floofy fucking yeah, like big, uh, fusion fucking nonsense yeah, food, gimmicky. like gimmicky ass, bitch ass food, hoity toady food. <laughs> the most Seattle food you can think of. But it's not, it's Portland apparently. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, no. Uh, and so, we, but Nicolas Cage realizes that the person who was in charge of this was one, was somebody that... He gave a shot to in his kitchen. Mm-hmm. He was learning and trying to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and so, like, he confronts them. Was like, I remember you. And so he didn't. He, and then the person who owns the restaurant was is completely taken back. You remember me? Oh, oh my god, that's incre- that's crazy. Uh, you're you're you. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming. On and Nicholas Case calls him out. I was like. This isn't really you, though. This wasn't the dream. That this you wasn't had. The, this wasn't the dream that you had. He's like, but yeah, you know, it, but it's successful. It's great. Things are <laughs> yeah. going good. 
And it's like, you told me you wanted this and this, this gastropub with this like detail, whatever, hot. You remember that? And it's like, did I say that? I don't think I said that. I don't think I said that. And then like, he like just creates an existential crisis to them when he's like, look, like, listen, man, like we only have one life to live. You're not act. You're not being you. None of this is real. These people don't care about you. You don't care about this food. You're giving your life away to this thing and just selling yourself out. And then he just has an existential crisis. And like that moment is so <laughs> fucking insane. real. It is so yeah. good. It is unbelievable. Holy I've seen. Shit. That's the moment I've seen over and over and over again. It is unbelievable. I love that, I love that moment. That. Uh, yeah, that's. So then we cut the end of the pig. No, the because then the end of pig is just fucking excruciating. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's... okay. So the end of pig. Uh, the end of pig is we find who the fuck stole his, the the pig. It turns out to be the the father of um the guy that uh uh fucking the fucking Nicker Brothers band guy. <laughs> what's, uh, his who, name? what's his name? Who uh Nicholas Cage has been selling the truffles to, um and it, and it, his. His dad has like a fucking iron fist in this community in terms of the Alex restaurant. Wolf. Alex Wolf's dad has like an iron fist on a lot of not only just the restaurant restauranting business, but a lot he's like a big deal here. Mm-hmm. And he he's not a man to fuck with. He, he treats himself like he's the mob boss or whatever the hell. Right. And so um but the way but Alex Wolf mentions at one point, like the only time the last time I remember them happy with my mom and dad is like when they came back from a restaurant, like drunk, just high off of life, and they were just loved each other so much. And that was that's what that's how I remember like the peak of my my parents' relationship. Um and uh, we find out that the restaurant that well, we find out at the end that the restaurant that he went to was Nicolas Cage's restaurant where he cooks the exact fucking meal that he had with his wife uh and uh the guy just like br- again he caused another mental break in this man who just like just it just he just cooked it perfectly and it took oh. him exact it's the ratatouille moment it's the ratatouille <laughs> moment where he's just like <laughs> to that moment and he just breaks so down yeah and the facade of being this tough guy who you can't fuck with falls apart and it's actually sympathy where he's all like I'm sorry, the pig died. Yeah. And it's just Nicolas Cage is breaking down in tears. And then that leads to the ending where, like, it's oh, it's whatever. Like, hey, we know now. I'll see you next week. I didn't need the pig, actually. I just like the pig. Yeah. And the pig was from my wife. And we play the tape from, from the wife with the song. That's really sad. And again, this is mostly my argument for why it's one of the best movies of the year. So is that it is... Pig, at the end of the day, is a movie about... It's a movie about... Uh, what if you loved some... What if you and the person you loved loved something together as equal? And at a certain... And then that per, then your other, your other half passes away tragically. Can you still love the activity or this passion like cooking which was for them they loved cooking and they loved each other if he lost her he can't love cooking anymore because it's just so painful Mm -hmm. and that and he had the pig that was the the, that was the thing that was like this was I, i can remember you yeah like i have something to love here and yeah and uh so that moment where it's like realization like man i have one less thing to like care for in this life and you hear the song and it's just sad it's just so deeply sad and it's just so goddamn good and it just leaves you with that <laughs> to move on with yeah. your life now continue to live your life just go <laughs> again which is why i wish i would have watched this in a movie theater when the lights come down Dude. and it's just hitting you yeah, it, it is incredible in there and i was dying <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm surprised i walked out so of what moment do i cut i don't know <laughs> I think for me, it's uh, ultimate in moment. I think it is uh, the restaurant scene. None of it is real for me personally. Yeah. That is the moment. The ending is great, but yeah. it is the punctuation point to the wonderful story that it told right. up until that moment. Okay. Uh, Pig is so fucking good. Pig is great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's my, actually my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> I mean, 
I have been telling people, like, my personal favorite movies of the year are things like Bo Burnham, Annette, and Night House, but Pig is hands down the best movie that yeah. I watched last year. It's very good. Uh, so I can, we can cut the end yeah. Okay. So how about the prison brawl from <laughs> <It's very good. laughs> I just, just, I just diff- wanted something completely opposite <laughs> from what we were just talking about. That uh, scene rocks. That scene's very funny. <laughs> gloves off. That's the moment where the movie takes off Holy the gloves. Holy shit. Um, it's very good. Uh, like you said, Carrie, looks like a, an entire cast of a John Waters movie got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> John Waters costume party got arrested. No. Oh, God. That movie's awesome. <laughs> Carrie, you're you are like the like sole defender of that film. No, you're no. You, what are you talking? Everyone for? I've talked to who's seen the movie is like that's you, one of the worst films. You hang out with right. losers. Yeah, you I do. To, you talk to idiots. I do. You're right. <laughs> that movie rules. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. It's so good. <laughs> Sorry that you and your normie friends don't like it. Why don't you go watch Ghostbusters Afterlife, man? I refuse to. I hate that movie. Uh, It's very good. Malignant rocks. Is that my favorite movie? Ah, yeah, yeah. That's where the gloves come off from that movie. That's pretty good. But I don't know if it's going to make it. Probably not. In the sincere, (laughs) really good. I mean, I sincerely love that, but in the. It's so fucking awesome. Um, Yeah. <laughs> All Eyes on Me is fucking great. Uh, it is the again another punctuation point to the thing that came before it, mm-hmm. where we get real. We tell the ultimate joke, and the joke <laughs> is that I was at a point where I think I could go put myself out there, and now we're in this pandemic where that's impossible, and I have now tortured myself with doing this special by myself with myself. And here I am. <laughs> and here's this song. All eyes on me. <laughs> it's great. I don't know. And with that, I don't know what to do. So uh, well, how many how many moments do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we could probably go ahead and cut the opening number. From it's the very night. good. Thank so God. God. I it's love it. So I listen to good. it. I listen to it. Regularly. It's yes. so good. It's so hype. It's so. I saw. I saw forever ago. I saw a tweet that was like, "What if we just start the Oscars with Adam Driver and <laughs> Marion Cotillard walking in, being like, so may we start?' Just to confuse everyone because there's a zero percent chance that anyone in the Academy knows." What that is. Again, I don't watch a lot of musicals, but uh, my favorite part. A, a, a key point in a musical that George will like is that where it's the welcome, welcome to the show. Mm-hmm. Like this is like, let's fucking go. Here are the players, and mm-hmm. we're gonna put on a show for you. And that's what that moment that, is. It's so good. That movie is the best. It's great. I love that moment <laughs> and, so much. Just, I love the entire setup also of the over the opening credits of him being like, "All right, sit down." stop breathing no breathing during the show and then it's just all right here we are this is a musical you ever heard of a fucking musical yeah, before exactly loser? it's great i love that movie it's cut so that's fine that's fine okay awesome <laughs> so we're at five now we're at five now yes um the aspect ratio shift from sensor is very good Fantastic. um i feel like it probably will not hang judging on what we're doing right now because it's it feel it's more of a visual thing and i feel like a lot of this is like the a culmination of like the film itself and this this is more of just like oh okay we're just going going for it i don't know also i think hand in hand with the aspect ratio moment for me is the like final couple minutes where they're in the happy film finally yeah and they're driving i I, I feel like that's all part of it too well it's just that's the part that i like the most yeah like well like obviously watch it like scrubbing on the video player and watching the screen go is really cool but my favorite part of that sequence is when they're finally at the happy video at the end that they've been working towards and then it just glitches and you just see them screaming in anguish. And it's like, oh, we're trapped here. Great. Yeah. Perfect. That movie's awesome. That movie is very good. I like, I mean, I love Spencer. The problem here is that is a Spencer moment that I don't love very much and I like it better than, I like the Spencer moment better than Spencer, but it, in the spirit of having something from Spencer, sure. That's we, the theme we, of this, we can cut this episode. Spencer. Okay. I'm, I'm glad. All right, now uh, I feel like I lose Ray Go Splat. Um, I'm glad you know that. Oh, no. (laughs) 
because I love it, but, you know, George hates anime. That's not true. I liked how my favorite part of that movie, I think, was how they truly conveyed. I mean, I haven't had that bad depressions. I had shaking moments of anxiety, but not deep. I'm going to, I don't know. I don't want to eat. I don't want to come out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything depression, which is what that character has at that moment. And I think that was done very well. Out of the things that the movie does well, that was the one moment where I actually felt sorry for this character again, instead of being idiot, you piece of shit, (laughs) Shinji, you motherfucking dumbass, bitch ass fucker. Uh, where I actually genuinely felt sympathy for that character. So he he he's going to, and I just love how everyone is like, everyone just giving him space to like feel everything that he's feeling, and I feel like that's something that in general people people who are feeling like feel like they're not allowed to like, why are you so sad? Blah blah blah. And like in the concept of that shows like, why are you all sad? You have your giant robot. That's so much fun. <laughs> But it's like, no, he's like going through like a lot of stuff. And, you know, I have also in, in general, like when you're when you're in that t- in, in a space like that, you do need just like space to just be alone and like with yourself. I do like how Asuka, while recognizing that is still like he sucks, though, still just, oh, because, yeah, 100%. He, just because he's going through it doesn't mean I have to feel sorry for him. Oh, yeah. I just no, leave him alone. She's also justified <laughs> in that. But I, I, I just love that. It's. It, it it feels like a just just a nice quiet beautiful moment in that film that is then abruptly um, sent back spiraling into darkness because Ray went flat. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what's the I want to move that. So now the standout moment of 2022 presented by the Flash entering the Speed Force in Zack Snyder's Justice League Award um, is Christmas time with the boys from Spencer, the restaurant scene from Pig, and all eyes on me. Bo Burnham's inside. It's got to be one of these. I think I. I don't. It's hard because I think I did. I. I gave my argument for Pig, so I don't know. I feel like you gave a good argument. (laughs) To be honest with you, I love All Eyes on Me, and I think that's one of my favorite moments of the year. But I think the restaurant scene from Pig is a fucking world edge shatterer. It's great. (laughs) It's so good. This man's about to ruin. I'm about to ruin this whole man's career. I'm about to make this man want to end his own career. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's uh, great. Yep. All right, winner. Restaurant scene. Woo! None of it is real from Pig. Yay! Yay! That Woo! was the hardest category, uh, I think. Yeah. I did yeah. it. Who? I mean, it wasn't the hardest category of the night, but that was the hardest one so far. It's it's hard because there's they're so long. Yeah. There's so much things have to talk about. Uh Finally, some some uh, laid back awards here, folks. Yeah. All right. Next, everyone. I've I've gotten your letters. <laughs> it's one hundred percent the letters we get are these letters that do not go in their award or highest honor. For those uninitiated, this award goes to the film that had the most do not go in there moment of the year. Um, obviously, a reference to the film Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, um, and no other film, of course, uh, <laughs> before that. So the the nominees and there's only one winner for this category by the yeah. way is the house from the from the night house the boat from the night house <laughs> Bo Burnham's little house the house of Gucci uh, shady side from Fear Street the church from Censor I guess the house in Resident Evil Spencer um, Mansion and the Spencer Mansion from the royal family's house. Guys, if there was one house that you did not want to go in there, um, what, 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 what do you think? Because uh, I know the answer. I would choose the house of Gucci is my most don't want to go in you there. You don't want to go in the house of Gucci? No, I do not. That's fair. George, how are you feeling? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was literally called Don't Go Into the Church. Uh, that That is why it's there. You should not go into that church. That's true. Mm. I got some good news for you guys. I would not it's mind a, going into the night house. I'd go in the night house. It's a pretty gorgeous good, yeah. house. I got some good news for you guys. It's the royal family's house. Because, okay. because cause that is a real house that, that has ruined real people's lives in the world. That's true. Um, also, horribly it racist. Also sucks, Have yeah. you seen, what was it, Prince Philip? Who was the old man who, so, who like, BBC was like, he looks... Ten years younger, and oh, like the photo oh, of like a purple corpse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> that is why the royal family's family is the place you should Ooh. never enter. Um, I agree with that. 
Yes. Shout out to that little walk-in cooler with all. Yeah, the exactly. Oh my God. Very that good stuff. stuff. Delicious. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the next category is uh, best old movie. It's not really a category or not any... the beach. Not the beach. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the beach. Uh, it's just us. To, just <laughs> best old movie. Old. Anyways, <laughs> going on. <laughs> Uh, this is where we talk about uh, yeah movies we saw. Um, well, I guess we all decided Twin Peaks is pretty good. Twin yeah, fucking we all watched it and we all really like it. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. This it's, is it's, who I am. It's now. also like I like it, but like I wouldn't really recommend it to people because ah. like I think just because like I this... recommend it with a watching guide. Yeah, because yeah. like the second season is like it's challenging a... yeah, to it, watch. It's rough. <laughs> And then you get to the third season, and you're like, "Whoa!" And if, plus, like the film, like I when we rewatched it at Alamo, like I loved it. Yeah, like, I like I first, it a lot more. Watching when I first it watched it, I was like, huh. "Okay." <laughs> and I think that must have been how people felt at the time. Sure. <laughs> I enjoy seeing Sharon Tate naked. I guess I don't know. Yeah, nice. sure. Why not? <laughs> um, and her scream, but yeah, scream very good. But yeah, Twin Peaks is good. I'm happy we. I finally watched it. Uh, I think season three. I am very glad David Lynch got to make that. Mm -hmm. to, yes. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go through, yeah, Ryan, go through some, some stuff that I've watched this year that I really like. Um, Gonjiam Haunted Asylum. This is a Korean found footage movie. I that passed I this movie on Tubi the other day. Yes, it's I was on like, Tubi. That looks great. <laughs> yes, it's on Tubi. But here's the thing: this movie's amazing. Really? This is the best found footage movie since Blair Witch. Dude, one hundred percent. It is. Say a no more. It is. Sold. It is a group of like Korean vloggers have a YouTube channel where they're like the horror show and they go to like all this spooky stuff and they're like we're gonna go do a live stream at this creepy ass man creepy ass old haunted asylum and like they go there and like it's like funny because it's like it's like going off of like that kind of like youtube culture of mm -hmm. like who here we are guys but like the house is a nightmare the mansion <laughs> is a nightmare yeah. it's creepy as hell and it's so good like I thought I was like high when I watched it because I was like, "Am I crazy for thinking this is so good?" And then I showed it to our friend Zoe, and she was like, "I can't sleep tonight after watching that, Ryan. That was horrible." But it's so good. I would highly recommend it. It is a definite sleeper hit. Yeah. Um, Tubi and Voodoo have no idea. It's also on Voodoo free. Ooh. I checked the other day when I was going through it, but it is fantastic one yeah. of my favorite horror movies of all time all already nice. it's, I, it's I love great found footage movies. oh this is it's so good Sick. and it does very fun stuff with it um next i finally watched all of the world of tomorrow the first three episodes i don't know if you guys have seen these, these this is the don things? don Hertzfeld. yes yeah yeah um, he has a ongoing series of kind of like science fiction um animated stuff uh, called World of Tomorrow, and they've been difficult to watch, but he had a Kickstarter where you get a DVD of, like, the first three, and I, I got it. That was the first and only Kickstarter I've ever done, because I knew he would deliver on it. Right. And <laughs> they're amazing. They're so good and, like, beautifully animated and, like, sad, and each of them is, like, 20 to 30 minutes. So, Sick. it's it's great. Um, and then lastly, uh, Ruby Sparks, um, Paul Dano, Zoe Kazan are great. Um... Zoe Kazan wrote it. Um, it's about a writer who, um, a famous writer who got famous from a book he wrote when he was 19 and now he's like approaching 30 and he's written nothing since then. And he's like, I gotta do something. And he starts writing like basically a fan fiction of him meeting like the perfect girl. And she just shows up in his house and she is Ruby Sparks played by uh, Zoe Kazan. And it's him, you know, realize like, huh, like this, this perfect person, like, that I think is perfect is in my life and like how that actually is affecting me and how I hmm. actually feel That's about good. it in, in a real situation. It is great. Would highly recommend it. Uh, <laughs> very, very sad and very scary at some points too. Ooh, um, so spooky. yeah, it's great. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, so my, my stuff I think is, uh, it's not that exciting because I've talked about the matrix a lot uh, this past year. Um, but yeah, I, I truly can. I I love the Matrix. One of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Um, I love it as a piece of like a time period of where we are at as a you know as a people uh, culturally. 
I think the action is fantastic. I think the the narrative. Okay, I think the part where Morpheus tells Neo what the Matrix is just is fucking incredible. L- pretend it is the year nineteen ninety nine. All right, you're like, what the fuck is this Matrix movie? The marketing campaign was all like, what is the Matrix? What is the Matrix? What is the Matrix? You, as the li- the viewer, have been, what is the Matrix? So like, all right, sit down. What is the Matrix? We are all fucking in the fucking dumbass pods being used as by robots as batteries. They fucking make babies in farms and... When us as batteries are dead, they gooify us and they feed that stuff to the baby. Here is a baby <laughs> with metal tubes stuck in its fucking mouth in this pod. And these fucking giant fucking robots are fucking scooping up the pods. It's fucking mind blowing. It's so good. I love it. Um, yeah, I think the Matrix is fantastic. I really like the Matrix Resurrections. The Matrix Resurrections is essentially Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 Hell yeah. part two, or the live action version of that. Um, yeah, I love The Matrix. It's great. Um, In the Mood for Love. Uh, finally watched that this year. We saw, I saw it twice. Well, I guess I saw it once this year, and then I saw it 2021. Um, this movie's everything that everybody said it was for me. Uh, yeah. it, it hits perfect. I think when I saw it the second time, it was... The, the weird thing... <sighs> It's always weird watching a movie that has such critical acclaim that is old the first time because I feel like it's a lot of like trying to dissect it and being like, do I, do I, me, George Cruz, actually love what this is doing or am I noticing the things everyone says that are good about it yeah. and I respect it and hey, that is pretty cool. Is it yeah. actually resonating with me? And the first time I was like, that is pretty cool. This Tony guy, he's a pretty good actor. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would cheat on any of these two ever. But okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then when I watched it the second time, knowing what was going to happen, I was like, fuck, yes, let's go. <laughs> Give me that slice of pizza. Yum, 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 yummy, yummy, <laughs> yummy. I love fucking, uh, I think it's Nat King Cole trying to sing in Spanish very poorly. <laughs> I fucking love it so much. Um, again, it's like yearning the movie, the part where uh, where they're rehearsing, you're going to confront your husband about cheating. And it's just so sad. It's great. I love it. Um, yes. It, this is, in my opinion, like one of the few like objectively like perfect like films. Like when people say, I think it's, it's, it's so good. In my Letterboxd review the second time, I was like, this is what I thought I would feel with Casablanca. The way people built up Casablanca in terms yeah. of this story about this man and a woman who like love each other, but it's not meant to be and all this and the sadness of that. Uh, yeah. And which I, I think like. I think, I guess Portrait of a Lady on Fire is kind of that same genre of lovers not meant to be. It doesn't end tragically, but it ends... Not ideally. Not ideally, and it's kind of sad, like, what could have been, and it wasn't, you know? Uh, but yeah, In the Mood for Love is great. Neon Genesis Evangelion, The End of Evangelion, a movie I did not like when I first watched it. Wow. Um, and how do you think about it now? Now that I've seen all of Evangelion? Yeah. Okay. This visually this movie is phenomenal yes. visually the stuff on display there, is there has been nothing like it since it's so good um uh, but is crazy the story of it is not great um in the context of what's actually happening is not great and i like don't like it contextually but i'm glad i saw it and uh i think it's an interesting thing to poke a poke at into uh, I think it's it's just an interesting. I'm glad I saw it as a piece of thing that I can I can, if somebody mentioned it like oh the end of Evangelion I was like ah oh, yeah I know the complicated things about that thing and uh, why it's cool why it sucks uh, all that stuff and I'm glad I know that and uh, yeah it's it, it's uh, it's pretty okay I guess watch it I don't know it's very good it's I like the movie a lot I don't know. <laughs> Carrie what are your favorite things from this year uh, or last year I watched know. a movie called The Hunger. Oh. which is a vampire movie with David Bowie and another lady whose name I don't remember. She plays like this mistress vampire lady who has these lovers over the centuries and she promises them eternal life. Ooh, Susan Sarandon's in yeah, it. Yeah, Susan Sarandon's oh. in it. Uh, she's not the main lady, but uh, David Bowie's character, who is the lover of this main vampire lady, finds himself aging rapidly as if he had gone to a certain beach. 
And Whoa. Uh, so then he what are the odds? he uh, meets up with Susan Sarandon, who is a scientist exploring the effects of aging and like how to delay those effects. And it's a very good movie. Very. It was like when I was watching it, it was like a "How have I never heard of this?" type moment because I was like, "This is everything I could possibly want," and it's very good. I would highly recommend it. Huh. And then I watched Wild at Heart, oh. uh, a David Lynch film. Uh, it's in the same ilk as stuff like Natural Born Killers, where it's just these two rowdy people who are in love at the behest of everyone around them. And they're like, I'm going to run away with this person because I love them. And they just get up to hijinks and uh, Nicolas Cage and Laura Dern are the two people, mm-hmm. if I didn't mention. But uh, Nicolas Cage at... I don't want to say his peak hottest, because I think his peak hottest is Pig. <laughs> Whoa. But for me personally, but this is another, a different era of Nicolas Cage Is this like hotness. Moonstruck? Th- this uh, was yeah. 90s Nicolas Cage. Yeah, this is 90s okay. Nicolas Cage, which leads me into my other point about why this movie is fun, is because it was being filmed around the same time as Twin Peaks, so okay. there'll right, just right, be right, right, right. lots of Twin Peaks bit players that just pop up in this movie. So when I was watching it with Greg, I think he was deeply miserable because like every five minutes I'd be like, oh my God, it's uh, Log Lady. <laughs> it's, 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 it's Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks. And he's like, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it's uh, Audrey from Twin Peaks. And he's like, I don't give a shit. Like, but that's Big Ed. <laughs> it's Big Ed, Greg. <laughs> he, has, he owns Big Ed's gas farm. Laura Duren also very hot in this movie I mean, in yeah, a very absolute, 90s absolute way. Movie, it's absolutely. Great. But... <laughs> But uh, yeah, Nicola, it's just very funny and also at times very not funny and very good. An emotional journey. I would recommend it. And I also watched Holy Motors, which is another movie by the same guy who directed Annette, who, oh. which we all know and love. And uh, this movie is definitely the most uh, pretentious one that I'm recommending here today. But it's about this guy who is a hired... Not like he's like a, a a character actor, and so the entire movie is just him going through these different vignettes of different films that mm-hmm. he's in, but it's not made clear that that's what he's doing. He's just like wandering throughout this day, and he goes in a car and goes from scene to scene, and he like talks about how the movie is just happening around him, but he doesn't even know what's going on, and it's just. It's a movie that makes you confront what kind of person you really are. Because it's like, am I putting on an act? Who am I? What's going on? And it's just really interesting and really good. And I liked it a lot. And I'd recommend it. It's a very, very artsy-fartsy fun yeah, it looks French like it. watch. <laughs> <laughs> very um, good. Very, very good. God damn, Laura during this movie. Holy it's shit. It's a very bro. hot movie. Very hot. God damn. A lot of other hot people in that movie. All right. Well, uh, that is uh, our favorite mo- old discoveries of 2021, folks. Now let's get to it. <clears throat> the top 10 best movies of 2021. This is a list, again, ranked f- from 10 to 1. Um, there are currently 18. Uh, I'm going to put the numbers next to this way, actually. Uh, we can actually know what the fuck's going on here. Um, if I can do that on my goddamn Google Docs. Maybe. No, that's bullets. Holding. No, I don't think I can. Please hold. I'm, I'm going to do it here. I, I got it. Don't worry about it, folks. <laughs> Anyways, we have Minari, The Matrix Resurrections, Spencer, Judas and the Black Messiah, Pig, The Green Knight, The French Dispatch. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Drive My Car, Shane Bo Burnham's Inside, Drive My Car Again. <laughs> 17 uh, movies. <laughs> Malignant. <laughs> Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, Censor, The Night House, and The Mitchells versus The Machines. Wow. I'm going to say it right now, folks. I think this is going to be the easiest one of all time. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Um, because I had a few other things that are just in my personal top 10 that I didn't include because I'm just like, like the souvenir part two. I love that movie, but it's like. You guys haven't seen that. No, yeah, I haven't seen the Souvenir that. 1. That, exactly. It would have been a whole production. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was just like, we'll, we'll skip that. I will, I'll put it out there. That movie is fucking amazing. Also, it happened. I feel like I didn't hear that that was a thing that was happening until yeah. you told me. Well, I, I had to go to a fucking 
virtual screening to watch it. Because A24 can be a real bitch yeah. sometimes. That's how I feel about After Yang. They put it on stupid Showtime. I watched that, yeah. I saw your review and I was like, oh, that sounds great. That movie destroyed me. <laughs> I, have, I love that. I, I will need to talk about it on our next show, but like, it was like Hell raining yeah. and it was night and I was just like, I am not okay anymore. Yeah, I almost saw that. an interview with that director yeah, with watch that. Japanese Breakfast. Oh, he's so... Yes, I was listening to the yeah, H24 okay, podcast yeah, yeah. with him. That was very nice. All right. I'm anyway. deleting The Matrix Resurrections. I like The Matrix Resurrections. It's not one of the best movies of the year. It was exactly what I wanted from a person who likes The Matrix. Oops. Deleted. So that's 16 I movies. I deleted the E off inside. So oh, no. Bo Burnham's Incid. <laughs> I'm looking at my personal top 10 and I'm like, hmm, I need to switch this stuff around already. I need to move Pig up yeah, more. Yeah, <laughs> I need to move up Pig on mine as well. Yeah. On mine, I have uh, Bo Burnham and then Annette and then Nighthouse and then Pig. But if I'm being true to my heart, like Bo Burnham's number one, but the two, three, and four, they're like all tied basically. Yeah. yeah I'm moving up Pig all the way. My around. top five are Evangelion, Spencer, Sensor, Nighthouse, and then Mitchells versus the Machines. Oh, nice. Um... Those are like my five like holy grails, I guess. Uh, and then I have inside, then Saint Maud, Minari, and then Pig. Mm -hmm. um, I need, I do need to move Pig up. I think it's definitely better than Minari and Saint Maud. Looking so back, good, baby. but I don't know. I don't like to address my like best of the year list after the next yeah. year. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just my. You want to lock it in? Like I went back and looked at my whatever year I watched Exorcist three for the first uh, time, and I had that at like number ten. I was like, Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's number three at least. Yes. <laughs> I. <clears throat> Is the Mitchells and the versus the Machines gonna make this? Game? I love that movie okay. so much. I think it's so like funny and like personal and visually like striking. If you guys don't feel passionate about it, I will remove it. But like, no, we can keep it on there for now. When when I first when I first watched it, I was like, I don't think how I don't see how anything can beat this. And then like four other movies came out and, and beat it. Yeah, um, I felt that me. way when I watched it too. That I really really liked it, but the, it 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 got Ta it time, got beat by a lot of things. That time went on. Yeah. yeah, is the Green Knight actually one of the best movies of the year? For it's this? one of my favorites. Okay. It was in my top ten. It's hmm? in my top five. Oh wow. <laughs> I have it above Spencer and Sensor. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> it's just so good. It's so cool. It is pretty. I'm just trying to find Mitchell's versus the machine. Oh, no. Carrie. Well, it's pretty low. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's below some things that would piss you off. <laughs> well, I know it's below Annette, which upsets well, me. Well, true. It's, it's below old. What? Carrie, are you kidding me? That is objectively the. You know that's not correct, right? This is my list. I, I this understand is that. for me. I understand <laughs> that. But you know that that is incorrect, right? Mm, oh, no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I get it. It just, it didn't stay with me. That's the I problem. understand. It it stayed, did, I, it, I loved it while I was watching it, but then when I think about it, I'm like, eh, eh. It stayed with me. I need to rewatch it again. I bought it on Blu-ray. Oh, nice. Um, I was hoping for it to come out on stupid 4K, but it never did because Netflix is so stupid and selective with their yeah. things. Like, don't I don't want to. Yeah, I don't get, get it. Me like when you, when you, when Netflix, when you make good movies, put them on physical in a good condition. But if we put them on physical, then you won't subscribe to Netflix anymore. I, I need to sub subscribe to Netflix because <laughs> everything everyone ever talks about is always on Netflix all, all time. All I know is I'm gonna be paying at least twelve dollars a month for the rest of my life so I can continue to watch. I'm thinking of ending things and Bo Burnham. Yes, like a bitch. <laughs> Why won't you put them on Criterion? Those Please. two specifically. <laughs> That's all I want. That's all I want. Anyway, fuck you, Netflix. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't know. Is. I guess we can cut nobody. That's nobody? that's a cut. Okay. That's a cut we can make. That's a good movie. Nobody's really good. It's great. Still not seen it. It's pretty good. Uh, George, where does Shane Chi rank in your? Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah. I don't know where this list is going. So that's a hard. Is it actually? Is it actually updating right now? Yeah, it okay. is updating okay, right making now. Sure. Yes. Okay, so it, it's, it's right now the eighth best movie of the year. But it's nice. still fifteen. Okay, I just okay, want to make. 15, I, yeah. I just yeah. want to make we'll sure. Need to five more movies. Okay. I, I, I like Shang-Chi a lot. It's probably... 
No, it's definitely the best superhero movie of last year. Yeah. Listen, you guys don't need to cut this movie just because I haven't seen it and refused. No, to but the thing is, I don't know what the fuck to cut. I no, sincerely don't know. What to but cut. again, Carrie, if you if you were to watch a Marvel movie, you would like Shang Chi. Like, it's still a Marvel movie, so it has I all of that. those problems mm. that those movies have. You think it's good? <laughs> yeah, you'll be. But you're like, hey, that was a good movie. Is it as good as Morbius though? You, you know, you're making a fair point, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think... I I'm sorry to what? cut you off, but I can't believe that Morbius is the one that brought me back. Like, you want to watch some I like movies. how you, Yeah. I watched Spider-Man, and then I was like, I'm done. Wait. Morbius! Morbius. <laughs> um, okay. I like the French Dispatch a lot, but I maybe like that's it. more of a me thing, because like it doesn't it. do anything new. Right. I like it a lot. I don't know... Did it make your top ten, Carrie? Mm -mm. It made oh. my top ten, but again, that's because I realized, oh, I love this. Yeah. So it's okay. close. It's number fourteen. I can... It's not like it's it's far down with Mitchells and the Machines or anything. But... Oh God! <laughs> I can see where I put I the fresh dispatch. I think you should cut the fresh dispatch. Yeah, we could cut it, like because like I really really like it, but I also don't feel super passionately about. Oh. Right, doesn't like it. To be I put I put Zack Snyder's Justice League over the French Dispatch. I think as a joke to myself. That's awesome. I also put Shadow of the Clouds just above Zack Snyder's Justice League <laughs> to make a point to no one, I guess. It was fair. All right. All right. Did somebody cut it and my thing isn't okay. I'll cut it. I didn't cut it. Either. Okay. I will cut it right now. It's right gone. Now. All right. Four more movies everyone. All right. I don't know if Malignant's gonna make it. I was Carrie. just about to say it, <sighs> Carrie. Can I just? I'm not. I'm not trying to judge your list. It's just more of curiosity. But where is Malignant on your list of favorite movies of the year? Nine. Oh my god. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> when was the last time you watched it? Recently ish. Okay. I've watched. I've watched clips from it. A, okay. A lot. Okay. 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 But. Uh, I wanted. Uh, I just didn't know if it had like stayed, mm. like stayed power with you. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I don't know where we go, folks. I don't know where we go. <laughs> Is Paul Burnham's inside a movie when you're? I think. Really I think, think that's that's it? where you know. know. I was in a serious. I don't know. Where it to it go. did show in movie theaters, and me and Carrie were not able to get tickets because it sold out instantly, immediately. Instantly. How is that possible? Fuck you. <laughs> My God, that would have been very fun in theaters. Listen, if you're going to cut Bo Burnham's inside and leave a bunch of movies I haven't seen on this list, okay. I'm going to be peeved. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to go, folks. I, I feel okay. like, I, I feel like cutting easy. Shane Chi. Okay, <laughs> go on. Listen, Minari got fucked by being in the weird in-between zone. It right. did, yeah. yeah. I am not able to visualize Minari with the yeah. yeah, exactly. Movies. It's weird. <laughs> But I just wanted to, for the record, say that it was a movie we didn't talk about last year. It is a great movie. It is. Very but it, it just it just doesn't really fit in the list because of that. I'm sorry, Minari, but that's okay. an easy cut. It's yeah, a good Minari's movie. Minari's been cut. Yeah. Um, that's three more movies we got to do before we rank them. Is Drive My Car good? I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, it's I very good. It. I think it's really good. Okay. And it's in my personal top cut. ten. But I feel, I don't know how Ryan feels, but I feel if it was cut from this list, I wouldn't be heartbroken. I wouldn't be heartbroken because like it's very, because I technically watched it in 2022. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I would be, heart, like that would make it easier for sure. Because it's definitely one of those like, you know, oh, cinema, you know, <laughs> yeah. like one of those. <laughs> like I like it for that reason. I'm not like, cinema. I'm not like personally like, oh, I drive my car just, it's more of like, yeah, that should have won Best Picture. Like, it was probably the best picture of last year. Like, being objective about it. Probably. Um, Since Pig wasn't nominated. I mean, obviously. <laughs> There's so many, like, niche things that, like, should be nominated that obviously aren't, and, you know, whatever. But if we cut Drive My Car... I haven't seen it, it, it so might I be, can't... It, it I might can't. be, again, in, like, a weird period because, like, it didn't come out in the States really until 2022. Um, yeah. So if we wanted to cut it to make life easier, I would... Someone put the Green Knight I sex. I saw that. I was like, who typed the word sex after the Green Knight? <laughs> Brian. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll delete that. Okay. Cool. 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 So um, we deleted drive my car. Is that what happened? Yeah, I deleted drive my car. I felt like maybe 
maybe in a similar Minari sense where it's like, oh, oh cinema and also in a weird t- period. Um, but yes. Um, you know, it. I know Annette's going to be in the top 10, so I'm not going to like stop anything, but... Can Malignant please not <laughs> well, be I don't know. I don't know about Malignant. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I... I just feel like in, in the caliber of like, you know, Pig and the Green Knight, like Malignant. Okay, I'll stop talking. <laughs> no, no, I no, looked at I Carrie's agree. face and it was, a bit, <laughs> it was aggressively t- negative. T- <laughs> the last 30 minutes of Annette really suck. I'm gonna That's s- really true. Listen, I'm fine with Annette being number 10. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just make it. We'll just make that decision. Already. I don't know about malignant on this list, Carrie. Damn Thank it. you. <laughs> all right. Fair. Okay. We all. Oops. We had Bobertum's incident. We all <laughs> yeah, back know again. it's a masterpiece. <laughs> all right. So we got to cut one more. One more. Uh, do you, I'll cut Mitchell's if it'll make you guys Ooh, happy. But I. I bet. I. Oh, you guys are the worst. I, I like. Uh, the thing is, okay, either Shang-Chi or Mitchell's goes, and the thing with Mitchell's for me is I just did not buy the repairing of the father-daughter relationship. I just did not buy it. Fair. I really didn't. And that was the thing for me. I love the spectacle. I love uh, the fucking dog that maybe it looks like a piece of bread. I don't know. He's a very good dog. I like that dog. Uh, I like uh, Olivia Coleman as, the comp- as a robot that was, lady. That pretty good. That That's pretty, the thing that's that's that didn't work for me. Um, I love the ending. I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. But Our, but 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 if you have an emotional stake in that movie, where I don't, I think Shang Chi's just fucking cool as fuck. So I I think I think Mitchell's is objectively a better movie than Shang Chi. All right. Um, but I'm not gonna if if you're passionate about Shang Chi, then I'm not gonna. We can cut Shang Chi and bring back Mitchell's. Okay. Movie. All right. Then I will. The Mitchell's. So then we have ten movies. Okay, I think um, the ten movies are just for, just for everyone. In no home. particular order, right now. It is Spencer, Judas and the Black Messiah, Pig, The Dark Knight, The Mitchells <laughs> versus the Machine. Wait, oh no, The Green Knight. No, I'm just, I'm just an idiot. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> Bo Burnham's Inside, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Censor, The Nighthouse, and Annette. We just put baby and net in front of that. There we <laughs> baby go. Annette. Baby and net. All right, the bottom of this list is going to be weird because oh. uh, I don't like even getting 3.0, 1.0 that much. I know you do, Ryan. <laughs> Someone called my favorite movie of last year. And I don't like the Mitchells versus the Machines. I like the Mitchells versus the Machines a lot, actually. I just, I just, I just, I don't know. I just feel weird about it. So, and a net, the last 30 minutes of a net really suck. Uh, <laughs> like a really drag. It's, no objection. It's here. painful, man. I think that's part of the bit, but also I understand. <laughs> so I don't know what the bottom of this list looks like, but I guess we can figure it out. Um, how, how I'm feeling it's going to be is Baby Annette number 10, Mitchell's at number 9, and then Evangelion at number 8. I, was I can put, live with that. I was going to put Green Knight lower just to be... Oh like, yeah, fuck that movie. I don't yeah, like it. I, just, I know you guys don't I like, don't like it. it. Put Green Knight at number 9. Okay. Oh, okay. I can do that. So that bumps everything up a little bit. Okay, if you want to write Green Knight oh, yeah. there, oh, okay. I will. I mean, I would put Knight Baby thing. Annette above the Green Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, we don't have to do that, actually. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, crap. I agree. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> and then I will move Evangelion above Mitchell's, you know, for, for the sake of the podcast. It's the only thing I care about in this world. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, even going, and I can't see it go any farther than that. I'm sorry, Ryan. That's, that's you know what? It made the top ten. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so now the middle. The middle. The Nighthouse is too low right now. That's it true. is definitely too low. You're that's all right. true. But I don't know where to, yeah, you just, just move it around at least. Um, I feel like looking at this, the lowest for me personally is Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, that sucks, but it, yeah. It does I suck. I can't fight for it. I can't, yeah. I'm sorry. It, yeah, that makes sense. That, that makes so a lot. So I'm going to cut that and move that above Evangelion, so it will be number five. That's, I can... No, number six, number sorry. Number six, yeah. And then the top five this year are going to be Spencer, Pig, 
Inside, Sensor, and the Night House. I think Sensor's a good five, in my opinion. A good five? That's my opinion. I can be at peace with that. I can so also be at peace with that. So that just stays where the that. way it is. <laughs> uh, and I need to exit and refresh my document, because it's fucking... Then... Okay. I... Uh, mm. <laughs> so, so Karen, I know, I know Bobo Rooms Inside is your favorite of mm -hmm. last year, but for this list, do you feel like it... It does breaks the top it. three. Top uh, three. I just want to know how you're feeling right now. As an because this was my number. This was my number six. No, yeah, last I get year. it. As a, an all encompassing and after our conversations, no. Okay. Yeah, I would put it at four. Yeah. Put Bob Burns inside at four. Wow, this is going a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, again, was. like it, it, there's some wiggling, but after that, it's yeah. Eight <laughs> to right. the ten wasn't so, that hard. So Spencer, Pig, and Nighthouse are the top three. Yeah. How do we feel about the order of this? I think... I think I like this order, but I feel like you guys really are passionate about Pig. I would put Pig, I would pit pig at number one. <laughs> okay. I would put Pig at number one, yeah. personally. Okay. Yeah. No, that's totally fine. I, I like Pig a lot. It didn't resonate with me as much as it did with you guys, but I, I really liked you know all that you guys have said about it uh tonight done there it is that's, hey! oh wow that's, <laughs> that's, it. that's crazy hey! that's, that's the easiest we've ever, ever done this so the best movie of 2021 is pig yeah! a movie that was nominated for zero things Woo! Woo! whoa <laughs> and spencer which was nominated for a few things so. it was didn't do as well at the big stuff but you know what that's fine and the night house which was nominated for huh what was that <laughs> what, what house <laughs> <laughs> aren't most houses at night, <laughs> like most of the, at least half of the day, at least. Uh, inside, Bob Burnham's Inside is number four. Number five is Censor. Six is Judas and the Black Messiah. Seven is Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. Eight is The Mitchells versus The Machines. Uh, nine is Annette, and ten is The Green Knight. I could make a move, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what is the move you're thinking <laughs> of? He, wants, he wants to bump Annette up. <laughs> oh, no. I yeah, mean, okay. a little bit, but no, we're not doing that. I was going to move Sensor in, inside, but we can, keep, oh. <laughs> we can leave it as is. So that's, we can leave it as is. That's fine. Congratulations, 2021. You're dead officially now. Oh, Killed. thank God. Gone. Dead and gone. Ah. <sighs> That was an okay year for movies. I don't know. It was yeah. fine. I hope for a better year, but I don't know. I think I think towards the end of the year, a lot of stuff came out that I felt very good about, but yeah. there was a long stretch where it was just like, all right, that's fine. But then again, last year was a little weird for movies. I feel like this year will be a lot better. We shall see. So stuff so. is maybe kind of keep coming out. <laughs> We'll see. Morbius is out now. Morbius. Yeah, finally. <laughs> uh, 2020 is so finally over. Morbius has been released. <laughs> uh, that'll be the next time we talk to you when we discuss Morbius oh, and the Batman. Oh, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Bat movies are finally out. Mm. <laughs> All my favorite Batman are in theaters right exactly. now. I really like that letterbox. We was like, let's see Paul Allen's Batman. <laughs> and it's a review of Morbius. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, that was our best of 2021. Thank you for listening. Um, I was George Cruz. I'm still George Cruz. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> I was Ryan. But Where can who, people find who knows, you? Who knows now? Uh, if you go on Letterboxd and look at Film Piece, you'll see my excellent review of Morbius. I was very happy about that review of Morbius, Carrie. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I thought. Silly. I don't know why I went the direction I did. It was very off the dome, but I liked it. I was a big fan of that. Edgy new direction from Ryan Edgy Lander. new direction. Uh, you, know you know what? <laughs> this year is going to be a little bit edgy. A little, little edgy for Ryan Ryan's this year. Ryan's entered his Morbius era. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think I'd be entered by the Batman era, but no, no it's no, the, no, no, it's no, the no, Morbius no, era. Absolutely not. Carrie, where can folks find you? You can find me on Letterboxd by searching my first name, Carrie, K-A-R-R-I-E. What I will say for Morbius is when I added it to my films of 2022 list it was super easy because i just had to add it and it was at the bottom it was the fall at the bottom it. you know what <laughs> same over here super easy can you imagine if something comes out this year and we're like yeah borbis was better than that because like, i'm having a hard time <laughs> oh, God, so I'm objectively <laughs> well uh you can find me at jay cruz oliver's 26 i don't think i said that but uh that's that um 
Yeah, we got an ep- well. I gotta record another episode at some yeah, point. <laughs> oh, this is the sacrifices we do for you, our listeners. Um, thank you so much for listening. Here's to another good year of movies. Uh, yeah. Are you? We have a podcast about it. And you're like, oh, what's it called? <laughs> movies. Movies. <laughs> it's in the name. Uh, <laughs> un- <laughs> until next time. Bye bye.